Welcome back to uh, Accounts of the Night Bees, Scum Villainy Game, Episode 2, Conflict at Cool. Yeah, it's delicious. What? <laughs> um, delicious. Oh my god. Sorry. No, I, I, usually mute, I usually mute myself while I'm eating. I forgot. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Start. Just, just the intro. Yeah, restart. <laughs> so last episode, the group ended up uh, moving through a... Um, illegal uh, jump gate to the Dration system from the Breck system. They arrived in the center of this system and have moved to the planet of Kogito. Um, at the end of last session, the only reason we're still on this page instead of the Dration sector one is because we're looking at the... Uh, oh, this is great. Wonderful. Um, I gotta fix a thing. The music's gonna die out. Um, so fun. We're having good times already. But we're on that first page there because uh, the homework that was discussed was making sure your downtimes are recorded and everything that you would have acquired or done for your downtimes is caught and gathered and good. Um, and then to start thinking about um, what your plans are to do during the free time or free play, free play segment of the Kogito um, episode. So at the end of last session, we discussed that there are a couple of interesting parties um, planet side. There are a number of, more like a handful, using numbers sounds a little bit more vague. Um, why is this happening? Why, why? What did I do? Why is it not showing an image on, I'm, I'm gonna throw a fit. What are you trying to do? So my stream um, image is not showing. Um, it's not showing. Oh, neat. Oh, God damn it. I don't even know what's happening, but I'm amused. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's all happening behind <laughs> the scenes, folks. It's all It's all a headache on my end. Thank God, Jesus. Um, so, yeah, this page, downtime. So you folks um, dealt with all that stuff, and then we discussed some people of interest that are in the base that you can discuss stuff with and kind of get information about or with. Um, making sure you understand what your purpose is here. Obviously, you are a rebel group. You don't take orders from anybody uh, besides uh, Captain Jazz. Um, you do as you like as long as you're doing things that you feel are helping the greater good of defeating hegemonic control um, wherever you can find it. And since the Dracian sector proposes an alternative to the kind of oppressive nature that hegemonic control is kind of over um, arching and very hard to get yourself out from the weight of, the Dracian sector makes you feel like you can actually do something and make some actual change. Um, and that's why you're here. However, like I said, you don't take orders from these people. They are not your boss. They are not in charge of you. So during your free play time, the main things that you'll be understanding here are the aspects of the conflict on Kikido. Uh Name of the episode, roll credits. Um, so you understand exactly what is kind of going on here and what you're dealing with and whether or not you want to involve yourself in it um, or not. Um, so first off, the uh, hegemonic control is not present. They do not run this planet. There is hegemonic um, uh, influence present here um, in the sector um, and kind of on the planet, but it's mainly corporate control that's present here. There's the Wutani Corporation, which is excavating um, minerals from the planet um, at no concern for the well-being of the environment, uh, at no concern for the well-being of the tectonic structure of the planet. It is just direct mining. They are taking the raw materials out um, and using them for 
sail. They don't really even have a purpose of their own for these materials. They just sell them, in some cases, to the hegemony. Um, the other presence that is here... Sorry, is John, can you name the corporation again? Wutani. W-U-T-A-N-I. And so it is not one that is present in the book. It is unique to this variation of um, scum and villainy. Um, continuing, the other group that's present here is the Starship Guild. And they're normally seen as kind of a direct connect to the hegemony, but what's known here is that the guild is actually pressing itself away from like the direct core rule in the Dracian system. They don't allow hegemonic battle cruisers to come through unless specific tributes are made to the guild. Um, so the main. Uh, oh, my music just stopped. Very cool. We're having a great time. Um, oh, I see. It's a hard Still stop. Here. It doesn't even have a re It doesn't have a rotation. That's very hilarious. Um, great time. Uh, it's okay, John. This morning I started orientation and was talking to myself for 20 minutes and no one told me. I've been talking I was to myself muted. for 15 at least. Uh, <laughs> That's wild. That's <laughs> actually wild. Um, that was John Abedigo too. Um, hilarious. But uh, like I was saying, the Star Smiths Guild, it is kind of the important guild when it comes to kind of hegemonic control in different systems and different like um, you know uh, sectors, since they are basically barring the um, hegemony from entering into this um, location, they um, have created kind of a uh, a difference of power, a shifting of power that is not normal. Uh, for folks, and so it, it's not seen that the Star Smiths Guild is bad, but they're still hegemony technically, so they're still bad. But at the same time, they're it's like an infighting thing, so it's really dependent on how you want to view them and view individuals from the Smiths Guild, Star Smiths Guild, um, kind of moving into the beats. Um, the location that you are in. Um, is a network of old mining bases and mining um, outposts that exist in the Cogito Lake Cliffs. And like I mentioned last session, it's a series of very rocky canyon structures that kind of circumnavigate a number of different bodies of water um, with large lakes covered with kind of a um, discoloration as mentioned, but clean, perfectly clean water underneath. Um, there are rivers that run through and underneath the, um, the rocky structures present here. Um, it is the main source of liquid water. So what you know is that there are water pipes that lead out of this place into the Starsmith's Guild's uh, factories and facilities, into the mining facilities of Utani Corp. There's a lot of position here for the rebels to just take them off the grid, so to speak. However, the call has been not to do that because not only would you be harming those corporate individuals and the guild individuals, you'd be harming the individuals who are currently indentured underneath them, which is a number of Imish, um, the local uh, species for the planet. Um, that were the ones who actually built the facilities that you're in um, and um, were initially kind of indentured um, in a mutually uh, beneficial agreement with the, Star, the Starsmiths Guild to build ships here. The problem is this Wutani Corporation has basically changed the paradigm. Pays have dropped off. It has become more of a bureaucratic mess as well and corporate structure basically pushes down the individuals who are not tied to the top uh, corporation like stockholders or management that exist in Wutani's uh, hierarchical structure um, does anybody have any questions about the opposition 
like what you're up against in that regard. I'll take your silence as a no. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then um, the next beat um, understanding is your allies, so to speak. There are a number of individuals present who have uh, kind of formed a conglomeration of a rebel effort here on Kogio. First off, there's the uh, Yimish, um, who, or Imish rather, who are um, banding underneath one individual, Yanagi, who is kind of their warlord or chieftain. Um, he is very much a person who had democratic and um, elected kind of power before the Wutani started pushing the image people down and indenturing them against their will. Um, and he is seen as kind of a hero to the image people. So he is the primary leader for the image portion of the rebellion here on Kogito. The second portion of the rebellion that's present um, are the way users I mentioned. And they are a small band of about 13 individuals. This is not including um, uh, Kane, um, who effectively operate as scouts um, and kind of a detection element for the rebellion writ, writ large. Um, they are um, known as the 13 simply. They probably have their own group name, but it has not been kind of disseminated amidst the people, mainly because it seems like it is a harder to say word uh, that is probably in kind of the older Ur language. Not something folks are going to remember. Um, it, it, some people try to say it and there's nothing that in the time that you know, you're there that kind of rings like, you, you can't really figure out what they're trying to say to you. They well, then, if know. you say it, if you say it wrong, then you sound really cringe. And yeah. oh, who wants that? You 100 percent know yeah. that they're trying to say er words, but they're saying them wrong. So there's that. Um, the third element um, are the uh, fired resources of Wutani Corporation. These are not Imish. These are individuals who came to work here, and after seeing the um, kind of structure of what Wutani was trying to do here on this planet, elected to quit. But because they quit, they were surprised to learn that they weren't allowed to opt out. They were forced to either stay, or they were forced to stay and not be allowed into Wutani facilities. So what they did was, is they were what happened to them is they were exiled, and they found their way to be kind of among the image. Uh, the leader of that group uh, is Beric, um, and Beric is a, you know, very just, uh, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of a person who runs, like, a mining operation. Um, foreman. He's a very, he's a very foreman individual, right? He is very, like, loud, kind of, you know, bossy, um, and very just kind of, you know, uh, in your face, like, kind of interjecting um, that kind of thing he is very savvy when it comes to technology and he's actually the one who runs the spaceports that are kind of available present here in the rebel base and the last element are the lost crews a number of ships were allowed entry into the dracia sector to perform tasks and function and operate uh, but those ships for one reason or another have been broken down or defeated by the Starsmith Guild here on Kogito, or by Butani Corporation, they have basically pulled the allowance for them to move out of this planet's um, like area. Um, one of the ships that was stopped and kind of broken apart in this way um, was a ship called the Hunter's Mark, and it was piloted by a group of bounty hunters, um, among their number, Kane. Um, is one of them, um, as well as Runt, who we met last session. Um, right, and then the other crews kind of disseminated throughout. 
the leader of them, we already discussed, is Runt. And Runt basically acts as the kind of face leader of all of the others, where you have... Um, uh, sorry, my brain's not working. Where you have the other two kind of prime leaders and the 13 doing their own thing. The person who kind of draws them to, together the most is Runt. Uh, he seems to be a very uh, tactically savvy individual and has won a number of victories for the rebellion here on Gigito uh, in past months. Any questions regarding the rebellion's infrastructure at present here on Gigito? Um, I guess I kind of have a question. Does the um, does Wutani allow the miners to have like a union? No, absolutely not. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, normal uh, corporate uh, kind of mentality is you work for the corporation, but if you do not wish to work for the corporation, they just pull all your benefits and then send you back to wherever you came from. That's their severance. Mm. It's just paying for you to get back home. They did not do that here. So the Wutani fired individuals. Um, the, uh, the 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 paradigm has shifted. It's a bit different for them. They should have got sent home, but instead they were forced to remain here. And obviously they're not happy about it. So they're more mostly fighting for their um, their jobs. Really, they're fighting for their right to you know be treated as fair employees. Mm -hmm. The image are fighting for the right to have their damn planet. Um, nobody has an understanding as to why the uh, the way users are fighting, or, or even here, uh, for that matter. And then the ships that were kind of drawn into the fight here, and were kind of locked into the system. Um, obviously, they have a desire to get out of this space, um, so that's why they're fighting. And image is Y M I S H. Y M I S H. Yep. Okay. Any questions at all about anything that's been dis uh, like distributed there, lore-wise? Okay. If not, then we'll go ahead. Um, the, you said it was like the Starship Guild? Starsmiths, yep. Okay, and would they have any sort of affiliation with the Engineer Guild? Um, so the... they are a guild, um, so in that respect they are connected. All the guilds kind of operate inside of the hegemonic control, the hegemonic structure. Yeah. They're independent, but they're technically supposed to be subservient, or kind of like working towards the hegemonic uh, system. The Starsmiths obviously have a difference of opinion here when it comes to Dracia. Um, and politically, if you're kind of a politician type, like I think Steve would probably be the main one, or the speaker would probably be the main one who thinks about this. The Starsmiths Guild is aware that there's a lot of Ur relics present here. If the hegemony is like allowed access to them first, they're going to keep the best and keep everything and not allow the like understanding of it to disseminate to the Smiths Guilds um, and the like. So it's very clear that the reason why they've locked the gate effectively um, at Breck is because they wish to... Your shoes is dumb. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I don't even know what was said there. But if there are no other questions, I will move into the next beat then. So we're in a free play, and um, I demand that you uh, free play. So I'm obviously going to force uh, the hand here a bit. Um, and I'm just going to go from uh, left to right and kind of move across the names I have them listed so that we can understand like what your character is doing in the time that you're here and kind of learn a bit about the, um, the goals of your character um, and also learn a bit about what's going on here and how you might be needed here. So I'll start with you, Zach. Um, what is our Urbot pilot doing here in Cogito? 
Uh, we had discussed he was looking for signs of sentient herbots in the area. Yep, yeah, and we discussed too that you, in that time, kind of learned yeah. a bit about how the Imish um, being crafters, uh, that's why they were so, you know, uh, liked mm -hmm. by the uh, Starsmith's Guild, have herbots, like a lot more than is normal, uh, kind of um, with them. Uh, it seems like there's you know, one Urbot for every three uh, image people that are present here. And a lot of them seem to be um, near sentient um, mm -hmm. or pretty well darn close to sentient from what you can see and understand. Um, and so this gives you understanding that um, you know, Ur sparks are kind of things that do exist in this system. But besides that kind of seeking of knowledge, is there anything in particular that you just like on a narrative beat, not so much a mechanical one, uh, pun intended? Uh, that, not uh, particularly. I imagine his function is primarily to stay with the ship and to get pointed pointed in a direction. You know what I mean? Like narratively, the pilot's not going to be making those things or reaching out. He's going to be staying by the ship or like driving the shuttle around. Okay. If we get a Land Rover, he'll pilot the Land Rover for everyone. But like, so the Land Rover is not much of a use uh, present here. Right. Um, they use what are called skiffs, um, which are not technically repulsor. Um, they kind of function as a um, anti grab on land, but a boat on water um, kind of situation. Um, since there is a lot of water present around you. Um, it's obviously more necessary for you to have options when it comes to the train you're traveling over. Hmm. Um, the one thing you keep hearing about in the kind of latter days of your downtime is that there is a effort um, by individuals, um, someone who you keep having um, keep hearing about named Mo, um, and a group of individuals who are with Mo, who went to a crashed hegemonic battle cruiser which is different than the claymore class we're talking like very massive like destroyer ship um, known as the magistrate of iron and the ship crashed on planet um, due in part to the rebels access to an orbital cannon um, which you do not know the location of but you are aware now that this rebel group has access to an orbital cannon which are basically like coherence cannons, but much, much stronger and used for kind of disabling ships entirely or destroying ships entirely that are in low planet orbit. Any questions you want to follow up on on that? So you said there was a... <clears throat> Sorry, there was a team that went out to this wreckage site to recover items but it's a it's a big wreckage i can't imagine they got everything out of there right correct yeah they're definitely not looking for everything they're definitely looking for anything that's useful what the heck sorry i my cat's being goofy okay go ahead no i think i think that's not anything he would be able to follow up on his own, but maybe starting to make arrangements to see what kind, if he could do an expedition out there with like the captain and a few others, the engineer. Okay. Now, we can get a team out there, see if there's anything for us to find out there. Uh, Shisha, you had mentioned that you were interested in um, training. Um, you obviously one of your downtime activities was that and we had discussed that it could have been with one of the 13 or it could have been with Kane. Um, you would also know from the way that the light blade that you have is Kane's. Whether or not you wish to tell him that you have it is up to you. That's not We um we popped him, right? Yes. We opened him. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's like definitely is not interested in um i think at this point that'd be stealing basically i don't think she'd really want to steal from a fellow you know way user i think that's too risky it's not really her style 
Um, so she would definitely hand it over and would ask for an introduction to the 13 if they, you know, if it's possible to connect with them. Um, I think since I did kind of take two ticks and different things, I think it makes sense, like, it would make sense that maybe I did train a little bit with Kane and that a little bit, um, and then maybe the rest of it could have been done with the 13 if they're taking guests or visitors or whatever. During your time with Kane, before he introduces you to the 13, you mm -hmm. learn a bit about him. Um, okay. He, as we discussed, is a member of the Cult of the Seekers, um, or rather a former member of the Cult of the Seekers. Um, you learn that the uh, mentioned Ur Eaters group, uh, he um, is one of them, um, or was one of them. Um, one of the most poignant, kind of focused inquiries that he has in your early discussions is, do you have the egg? Or is it still back on the ship? Uh, the egg. I've uh, made an effort to stay away from that thing as best as I could. Our uh, medical officer is in custody of it, the last I, I checked. I obviously am the um, original owner, but as the rules of piracy are... Uh, their own thing and the rules of salvage even more so. I was left for dead and am only alive at your grace, so if you wish to keep it, I urge you caution. If not, I will take it and continue my plans with it. I mean, you are um, a very handsome way user. I'm sure you can charm your way into getting the the egg back from um, from our doctor. Are we meeting on the ship? Or are we? I elsewhere? assume you're on the the like the actual like you're in you're somewhere on the mountain or in the, uh, the oh while well, we're training. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's do we do we have uh, communications with one another? I mean, I don't know if like cell phones or thing it's like comms. Yeah, pagers. It's, yeah, it's okay. Comms. So I uh, communicate with, um, please hold while my brain loads information. One moment. I, I just imagine the screaming sound of like old modems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Z <laughs> Zellery. Um, so I uh, dial up Zellery. Um, hey, Doc. Do you have... Uh, I wanted to see if you still had that egg. Lip egg. I sure do. Great. Um, it seems like it belongs to um, the... Uh, our, our very uh, handsome uh, survivor that we found. Would you... I don't know. I know that you're studying it. Um, he seems to be kind of okay with giving it up, as far as I can tell, but he does want it back. I, I want to point out, too, every time you or anyone has mentioned how handsome he is in his presence, <laughs> he does that thing that Andy does, that really cute smile giggle that he does, <laughs> that we're all aware of. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> um, Did he tell you what's inside the egg? Um, Celery, I want to be very clear with you. I don't want to know what's inside no. that egg. I never want to look at it again, if I can help it. Um, hey, Doc. What, oh, hey, hey, Doc. Uh, hey, uh, Kane, what's in the egg? It is a creature. Um, can I put him on speaker? Yeah. Okay. He's a, it is a creature, um, a very potent creature as far as it comes to way use and the understanding of the way. In my order, um, we were taught a technique uh, known as the Kifitzat 
Haldorak, or the ingestion of the way, made it very possible for a way user to consume the way um, around them or in others to become capable of superhuman physical feats um, and to create a degree of uh, precognitive awareness. Um, the entity in the egg, uh, I believe we were dubbing it the Night Beast um, due to some old carvings we found on a uh, strange facility located on the planet uh, hold on uh, Rasa okay well which I'll move us to the Dracia system map so we understand Rasa is the closest to the mm -hmm. sun well, that's certainly intriguing. Um, well, if it's his egg, he wants it back. Well, I... Wait, wait. Is the egg part of the creature, or is it just its container? It is its womb, effectively. Oh, no. Ew. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so fascinating, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> Um, if it's his egg, you know, um, well, he, he explains it's his, his womb. He explains again that if he understands that he is alive simply because of your um, uh, desire to acquire things, the rules of salvage trump the rules of former ownership, and he's aware of that. If you're willing to give it back, he would graciously receive the gift, but he also understands that <laughs> in space. Uh, if someone saves your life and takes all of the stuff around you, you don't go, hey, can I get my stuff back? No. <laughs> Point of order on that. I didn't hear any of that conversation. He just gives it to you again. Yeah, okay. I, I was just fast-tracking okay. through it. Okay. I don't want to um, say it again. <laughs> but then Peta says she wants it. I mean, isn't that the captain's decision? Yeah, that's what I was just gonna. Maybe we should talk to the captain about it. I mean, if. Or, uh, a, a quick note, Zalry, you were the only one that was paid. You could just give your cred back and keep the egg. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, then I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. But then Lupita, because Lupita's a way user, it changed. Us about it. Oh, no, no. But, like, no. uh, she's Lu absolutely opposed to the thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lupita is not like, I mean, she's interested and curious, you know, and, um, I think. Bottom line, Lupita, I'm not a way user. If you're not comfortable with this egg, you're the only one who would be able to, if anything were to go sideways. You would be the only one who could handle it, and if you're not comfortable, then he can have the egg back. I'll gladly give it to you. Okay, yeah, maybe it's better off in his custody, but hold on. Before we make any final decisions, let's talk it over with the captain and see what his thoughts are. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is his... Hey, uh, Captain, that lip egg, you still want it? <laughs> It might help. No. Yeah, let's send Captain. Uh... I assume I'm if he's on the ship. I'm on the ship with him, so yeah, I yeah. Feel to go knock on his room and uh, approach him about the egg. Uh, Lupita here says that uh, this egg belongs to Kane, and okay. if we want to give it back to him. He'll continue on his voyage with it. You want you you want to give up our pet? Lupita is not comfortable with his egg on board, and she would be the only one. Considering <laughs> it's a way artifact, uh, she would be the only one who would be able to deal with any issues that arise with it. You say artifact? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, way being to being. 
Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, which it was worth. No. Lukita, do we know what the seg is worth? Um, I got you back on, like, one-on-one comms. Uh, hey, Kane. Um, is there a monetary value to this creature? I paid nothing for it. I found it. Um, I suppose there's probably a market for it. Um, it is something that was spoken about on Rasa in a detail that would befit an artifact. Ooh, I would have had him on speaker when he said that and given like the captain the there's a market? Eyes? Like eyebrows? Like, hmm? Um... <laughs> Well, I mean, Lupita would say, well, if there is a market for it, then I imagine there is a price you would pay to get it back. I am currently broke. <laughs> uh, everything, that seals it. All right, we're keeping it. And, everything uh, I had was on that ship, and you've given me back my light blade, right? You gave back his light blade? Yeah. This is all I have, other than what I've been gifted by the effort here and my... Co, uh, my co, co staff, co crew, um, from the hunter's mark. Um. Well, it seems like the captain would like to hold the beast for now. Um. Hopefully, uh, we can come to a worthwhile deal. How much longer are you in Cogito? I believe until our job here is done. Uh, my understanding is I was brought in the hopes of um, defeating uh, the uh, forces that are currently causing issue for the locals here. Defeating the entire Wutani Corporation? Yeah. Okay. To your Love training. <laughs> like Love plan activates. <laughs> like he, continu <laughs> he continues training you in uh, the kind of minor aspects of the ingestion techniques. Cool. Um, we'll cut to the next person. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, Tarosh, um, you definitely see that this place is very much a um, structurally different um, effort than you've seen in most spaces. Your group hasn't really dealt with a lot of rebel forces, right? It's mostly just been you kind mm -hmm. of doing your stuff. Yeah. And so seeing people who are operationally yeah. militaristic is very different for you because you come from um, a very different kind of uh, people um, who were also ordered and structured militarily. But this is, this is very different, right? Um, yeah. You are a bit impressed, too, at the skill and efforts that are put on display here. Um, and what you understand is it seems that they're looking for volunteers for what is being said to be a um, possibly no-return mission. Like, do you have, like, any details on said mission, or is that just all it's said there? So if Tarosh inquires about it and looks to gain more information, you can absolutely do that. Um, and if so, mm -hmm. you would learn that um, the people who are kind of putting on our fur, these sergeants, um, state that there's a Wutani mining facility that we believe we've got an opening to. We would definitely need um, some of the individuals that are currently out afield on the Magistrate of Iron, but if we can acquire them and they can help us, we can strike a great blow to Utani Corporation at this mining facility that has been left um, lacking in its security details. Well, I am your guy. Perfect. Well, there are not many volunteers. Do you happen to know anybody who might be interested in joining you? Hmm. I might know some, but and you came not here too sure. On that Star Cruiser, the um, the junky looking one, right? 
Yes. I'm gonna reach out to my commander. Hey now. Hey now. I'm gonna reach out to my commander Oof. and see if I can't um, speak to him regarding your desire to join. If you can speak to your crew, maybe mm -hmm. gather them and muster them, um, we could work out an arrangement. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> But they might not join. If not, I'll go. Let me ask first. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but so far you're the only volunteer. Um, but we probably won't send you by yourself if we can't muster a crew, um, a group that would be capable of maybe piloting a skiff or a shuttle over to the magistrate to recover the individuals present there. Um, you head back to the ship. A lot of mm -hmm. conversations are kind of happening that you're kind of overhearing with Zelri and the captain. Captain, um, you know, seemingly disinterestedly saying, "No, we'll keep it." Um, and uh, what do you, what do you say to who? Hey, Captain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I oh, real, real might. Quick, real quick. Uh, Celery, you can go, go play with the egg again if you want. Uh, sorry, Tarsh. <laughs> so, I might have volunteered, at least oh. me, to do right. this mission in the mines here. Are you or the others interested? Uh, what... What's what is it? What's what's the mission? <laughs> well, yeah, a little bit more than that, big guy. Jazz, have you been keeping your ear to the ground on operations here, or have you just been kind of staying on your ship, Jazz? Um, I was actually going, hoping to train. Okay, so you haven't really been keeping like abreast of what's happening. Yeah. So like the politics of it all are not really, and all the the. The hierarchy is not something to give a shit about. Okay. Continue. The, the mission was it like a? You said it was like a rescue mission in a so, way, right? Well, or... it's a acquire the people who are at the magistrate of iron, and then with their knowledge and help, go to this mining facility and um, destroy it. But it could potentially be a no return mission. Um, what in the biz is known as a. Um, uh, unaliving yourself mission. Um, oh. Not going to use the S word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Lami? Slip and slide? A slip and slide mission. A Lami. <laughs> a slip and slide. A Sudoku mission. Uh, well, um, he, didn't, well. he didn't get that much he, like, he doesn't really understand what the suicide part is, or the other nope, one, so word. he's gonna... No, we don't yeah. use that word. Nope. Slip inside. He's he's straight, he straight he's slip inside. He's straight away from the it. <laughs> yeah. Last word! It's okay, don't worry about it, Johnny. <laughs> I don't think it's a big deal. Oh, did I just... <laughs> I'm sorry. He, he <laughs> I just... My, my brain just processed of what I just did. <laughs> oh my god! My like, brain has oh, caught no. up with my mouth, and here we are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Heading down the slippery slide. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, Don't worry about it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway, um, it's not like there's monetization here. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I do know my way around mining facilities, but at the same time, I don't like uh, slip and slide missions. Unless it's, you know, mm -hmm. further. Who, who asked you about the, to do this, or? Oh, did I get the guy's name? Some guy. Some guy. I think Not um... some guy. <laughs> Not some guy. Yeah, his, his name is some guy, apparently. That Mr. Guy, he's a character. Oh, I think he was a uh, lieutenant, though. There was just some guy crosses his arms and nods sagely. Some guy. <laughs> some guy walked some up guy. to you and said, "Hey, uh, you want you you looking to uh, 
go on a slip and slide mission to blow up a mining base and you're just like, hell yeah. You're like, any... maybe, yeah, let me go ask my friend. Is there any pay? <laughs> is there any... Is this for the cause? Is this... Pretty sure it's for the cause. But it sounds fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, maybe. Uh... I think it all depends okay. on uh, who this fella is. Fair. Are you talking you know, to I'm just... strangers again, Tarish? <laughs> you know I'm just a straightforward guy. I don't really ask yeah. the additional details like, hey. <laughs> Your name. This... Your name. <laughs> name. <All> right, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say yeah. no for now. Um, unless <laughs> you do more. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to put a pit on that. Maybe if uh, you figure out who that person is, who they work for, and all that scrap, uh, <laughs> we can go from there. How's that, how's that sound? And then I pat him on the head. It's like reach way up. And... Yeah. It appears I'm not very good at this. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. But you are good what you're good at. And I, and I just need, he does like a flex. He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try a flex. Just a little. Talk, talk, <laughs> a little. Talk, talking Stain's job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tried his best, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Zalry, you could have stuck around in your shot of that and like heard all of that. Or you could have gone back and played with the egg. However you wanted to play it. When the captain kind of like dismissed me, I would have left because I take it as okay. we're going to have our own conversation. You got the egg. Is there anything else that you want to engage in like during your downtime, like during that free play uh, element? Again, not related to your downtime activities, but... No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, we'll skip John because captain goes last. Uh, Steve... Um, we kind of discussed, again, you're, you know, laying low, making sure, you know, the crew's on this point and there was some training involved in there. Is there anything that you want to kind of engage with that I've said so far? Um, I probably would have tried to make contact with whoever the leadership of the rebel cause is here and just so that get them to, get them to the kind of... was for you. <laughs> you're the person who needed to take all the notes on that, and I hope you did. <laughs> I may have been stuffing my face with noodles. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I don't blame yeah, you. I would be essentially getting in contact with them and kind of figure out what is the effort here? What are they doing to halt Wutani or like slow down Wutani from give, delivering these so, fur bots to the hegemony? They um, will let you know that they're currently pulling resources off of a hegemonic battle cruiser called the Magistrate of Iron that crash landed here about three months ago. In initial efforts, they were able to relinquish the craft of a number of um, different pieces of tech that are important. Uh, the first one that they um, acquired, the, the piece that's definitely kind of the star kind of achievement for them, is the ship had a very prototype very experimental, uh, Ur slash hegemonic, like Starsmith Guild uh, crafted engine that is said to allow a larger craft like that the ability to perform FTL travel, which is not common in this setting. Gates are the way you move from system to system. Ships don't typically have the ability to just do it of their own accord. Um, and they so then they've secured this. They have the drive, correct? They have it. That's the one thing that they've primarily secured, along with a lot of other smaller things. Like um, there was a large regiment of uh, fuel, um, and then there was also a large amount of um, small arms weaponry. In addition to the um, uh, the weapons that you were able to give them, they're basically stocked for days on ammunition and uh, blasters for as long as they'll ever need. They're never going to run out of ammo. Or and they they have plans to kind of shut down 
um, what Watani is doing for good, or are they only are they kind of just stuck slowing them, so or they have an operation being planned? With the information that you're gathering from these heads of uh, the rebellion, you'd also yeah. learn that they're still wishing to. They're still wishing to with, like, like secure items from the Magistrate of Iron. Super important for them. So the crews that have been able to get in have been smaller due to the fact that the Starsmith Guild has focused its attention on the craft and appear to be seeking out the kind of things that are present on it. They were slow moving to do so, and you understand why. Being a former member of kind of hegemonic structures, the bureaucracy that goes into making a move, like recovery, is not like instantaneous, right? The ship mm-hmm. crashed, and the, the 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 pros and cons of moving on a ship that could potentially blow up in your face, uh, or could be filled with rebels already, or could be filled with like wildlife. There's like a whole bunch of you know paperwork that has to be done for that move to happen, and so it finally has. Um, and that means that the uh, allowance for the rebel, uh, the rebel group, to move people into it has lessened um, as late. Currently, there is a detachment that's there, and they've been there longer than they were expected to by two cycles, two days. Um, so there are some desires for it to, uh, for someone to go and recover them. That's the group that was mentioned last session. Mo is the leader of that group, um, and Mo or Mo is a, a leader of that group. Uh, Mo is the member of the Hunter's Mark crew, who is a very tall, red-haired um, alien or Xenos. Um, so they need someone to go and extract them because they have information. Yes, and that it, needs to be brought back. It's not to be brought back. The other part of their desire is they don't have a group that's capable um, to not only extract that group with the information they have from the Magistrate of Iron, but then to also move with them into Rutani territory towards a mining um, structure, mining facility, and use the information that is on that ship to destroy that facility. Basically, it's understood that they have ship scans from the battleship of the entire planet. Um, and the facility would be the first hit once that information is recovered. Okay. Seems like it's kind of on a, t- you said on a time crunch since Hegemony now is essentially on their way. Like, they're, well, the or they're able to make... Or the, the guild, guild yeah. Like, the guild is there coming more active. Mm-hmm. Um... Okay, and probability of success? You would be told that it's basically thought that it could, once you get into the mining portion, it could potentially be a no return situation. Hmm. Well, I don't like that. Escape the yoke of the hegemony just to die in some godforsaken mine. But I will bring the information back to the crew and see what uh, can be done we may be able to extract your personnel but don't know if we're willing to potentially give up our lives just yet understood um the uh hold on my brain the mission is basically not going to happen and they're just going to hope that Mo and crew Mo Mo and company return and if that doesn't happen then they just won't have the the data that they need to be able to make that attack anyway okay so one essentially they can't do the mine operation without the data from Mo or it makes the mine operation actually easier it makes it harder or makes it yeah Yeah. so are they going to try to go do the mine operation even without the data as like a last ditch they need they're, they're vying for volunteers, and according to the information that you get, there's only one volunteer. And when they describe the volunteer, this would be like chronologically at about the same time, you realize that they're describing Tarosh. <laughs> <laughs> so like, mm. Reptilian guy, four eyes, weird yeah. mandibles, tail yeah. stinger on it. Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Not Didn't the craziest. Didn't ask anybody's name. 
Did that <laughs> Could be anybody. Didn't ask any questions, really. Not the craziest Aww. thing I would expect from him. It's fine. Okay. And so you'll bring okay. this information back to the captain eventually, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. see, yeah, it kind of seems like they're already hashing it out. Gotcha. And yeah, you'll basically walk in and just plop the details on them a little bit more thoroughly. Um, and then Magpie, the uh, engineer, um, what is um, Dax doing in kind of this in-between time? Again, all of your training stuff is handled. It's fine. But is there anything like you want to engage with that I've mentioned? Um, any kind of aspects of this like area that you want to kind of look at, look to or talk to? Um... I feel like she'd be kind of curious about, like, their more technical setup stuff, their mechanical yeah. stuff. So in the engineering uh, section, as they're kind of finishing the um, installs on the ship, right, uh, you would learn that the Imish are very, very thorough individuals. Um, they, uh, and they're also... They're kind of fucking adorable, right? So they're they're like five ish feet tall. Um, they're not like insanely massive height wise. Like you know, they're just small stature humanoid beings with reddish fur. Uh, they have cat and bear like faces, and they're just kind of working on your ship, doing their thing. Um, I don't know if you know what a Moogle is. Do you know what a Moogle yeah. is? Yeah. Okay. So, like, facially, I imagine it's very similar to, like, a, a little Koopo guy. Um, and they are just working hard and diligently on your craft. But you realize that none of them really operates independently. Instead, they always seem to be working with an Urbot. And for you, that's not something that you're familiar with, right? You're... Access to Urbots is not massive. You do have some robots that you've kind of engaged with or probably have that you use on the ship. But these are like literal Urbots who can take commands and then perform them uh, to full effect. And so this is very different than what you're used to. Um, it's very interesting to watch. Um, do you ask any of them anything in particular? Or just kind of see if you can't kind of engage with them like from a distance Heck, I, you better not try to pet them i swear to god <laughs> yeah they're kind okay. of like they're do kind it of, I, I do want to say they're kind of like i don't know if anybody i think the show is called red dwarf i think i know what you're talking about yeah so um cat person oh yeah it's it's as bad as i remember it um <laughs> Yep, it's exactly what I thought you were talking about. So, okay, it, it it it's like the original concept in my brain was that, but I didn't I didn't visualize it like that at all. And now remembering it, like it's like all of Red Dwarf is hitting in the back of my head. I'm like, it's not that. It's not. <laughs> They're like Tabaxi. It's the best way to say it. For those who um, are not understanding the words that I'm saying because they don't make sense to you, you never saw a Red Dwarf. Uh, this is a person who evolved from cats from Earth. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's wonderful. Watch the show. Check it out. Um, <laughs> those who are watching. Um. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful show. Please watch it. British sci-fi is some of the best stuff out there. Oh, that's all you have to say. That's all you have to say. <laughs> British and sci-fi. British sci-fi. <laughs> oh, no. Hitchhiker's guy, Doctor Who, like some campy shit. <laughs> We've got some crazy over-the-top stuff. Um, but yeah, they're more like a tabaxi, but with like a Moogle face. Okay. Um... Nothing? I don't... Can't think of anything off the top? Not off the top. I feel like she would just kind of, like, observe and, like, probably get, like, up close. Oh, for sure. And, and like... They're very receptive. Um, the thing you notice is, like, as you're kind of paying attention and asking questions, as they're talking to you, um, there's this very kind of elated look on their face. 
and you're pretty sure you could hear, and you're not sure if it's the engine or something, but there's oh like my God, this, they're <laughs> there's like this vibration, the sound that's happening as they're elated to talk to you about their work, and they're very <laughs> thorough in their descriptions of everything that they're doing, and um, they're very they're very willing to teach. I will die for them. <laughs> well, you may have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, she would just kind of like get in their hands on and like ask questions and like you know, oh, like this, this, like just and you get said involved. Training was a bit that you were doing, right? Yeah. So that makes sense. That worked perfectly with that. Okay. Um, so last but not least, um, we're gonna actually cut back a second because I do want to make sure I cover the last portion of the ground on uh, the way user. Um, Kane introduces you to the 13th, um, and uh, as you're basically talking to them, the language they use is very old um, uh, Ur speak, um, and you're initially kind of confused by it. Um, what was the... where are my notes? Sorry, bear with me here. Do, do, do. Da, da, da. The people, the peoples who are for the balanced study and uh, categorizing of the way, um, which I haven't decided how I'm going to translate that into a fictional language yet, um, but basically it is a block of text that is very kind of Dune-esque. Um, that is kind of put to you. Um, they just go by the peoples in kind of common parlance, and as you've been told, they've been called the 13 because their number is thus. Um, they are all individuals who present to you as having a strange duality when it comes to their nature. And what I mean by that is not so much in like a gendered mentality. The duality is they appear to be happy but very kind of stern at the same time. So there's like this, it's almost like a false, like Karen-esque kind of thing that's happening here all the time. But what you're understanding is that the way that they're presenting themselves in this, this state um, seems to kind of, for normal people, it would be very hard for them to understand motive inciting like what they're speaking about or what their motives might be in their dialogue with you would be hard for a non-way user and as you're kind of engaging with them in this discourse you're very much understanding that they're of one mind the 13 they seem to all kind of work towards uh finishing each other's sentences and kind of um it's almost as if they were like a collective um which is something you've heard about happening in way use, um, a kind of uh, symbiotic hive mind mentality, um, and in in some beliefs, in some way uh, beliefs, it is seen to be like the pinnacle of uh, conscious to kind of blend your own conscience with someone else um, or many many others um, to create this kind of more potent mind. Um, and another thing too is they are, um, you know, uh, in Adam's family, there's that lurch guy, like yeah. they're all just kind of lurchy, <laughs> not super tall. They just have a very kind of like pale and plain kind of look to them. And like I said, they, they seem to be happy, but at the same time, very stern. Their tone is very monotone. They're very much um, alien, I guess would be the best way to describe it. They're not human. They're not humanoid. They're not, they're not even like, you know, just like a, another Xeno species. They're just this weird collective of 13 individuals who seem to speak. You're, you're, you're talking to one of them, and then like the, the end of the sentence will come from over here, right? Kind of changing your attention to them. Okay, that's pretty weird. Yeah. What you learn from them is that they seem to be the source of a lot of the information that's coming to uh, the higher-ups for the Rebellion. Um, and you also learn that the reason that they're here 
on Kokido is they are seeking a relic. A relic that has been taken by the Wutani Corporation. Their people once lived here. Long before the Imish were even evolutionarily started. Um, and you learn too that their people, the people of the study and uh, collection of the knowledge, it's 13 currently. It has been many more over time. And what you learn is, is that they have basically carried some of those consciousnesses forward with them. So their memories are long and very, very old. Or at least that's what they say. And so this part of your training is probably the more into it, kind of like mental aspect. Whereas if there's a more physical aspect, that was definitely... Kane, the Jedi. Well, it seems like there's some legitimacy to their power, right? Like I'm learning stuff from them. Uh, well, I guess is it, there? Oh, god. Is there anything like in the histories? I mean, does this sound like uh, a legend I've heard before, or is this something that's like very new, unheard of for me? It's very rare, but it's not yeah. something that would be like completely like outside of your wheelhouse. It's something that would definitely sound, you know, there's like a, a ring of possibility here, right? Um, the other thing too is, um, do you like in your training with them? and kind of in your study with them, your time here with them, do you keep yourself open or kind of guarded when it comes to your your presence in the way? Um, I think I would be somewhat guarded. I, I don't... Unless they give me a really good reason to they don't be invite, vulnerable. Yeah, they don't invite or instruct you to be one way or the other. Yeah. I think I would re remain guarded to some degree, just as a so in early moments as of your, a safety. Early moments of your training with them, it definitely does feel like there is a probing, right? Like, and this isn't uncommon with way users, but sure. it, instead of it being like one individual kind of like you know, boo, what's going mm -hmm. on over there? It mm -hmm. feels like you are a cat at a cat show who has been put on display, and one of them is like, kind of, you know, this is the per this is the person we're looking at, and everyone else is like, ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> as as you're being observed. So it's a very interesting and different uh, kind of um, connection that first way touch. Cool. And so they are the ones that are saying, like, this is where we got to hit Utani, and this is, yep. like, the right place to hit for us to really do some damage. Correct. And they're also the ones that say that Mo and Mo's group are in danger, but they have the knowledge that is needed. They cannot tell you what the knowledge is, because it is a physical thing. It is data. So they cannot stream that to you. They can tell you where it is and how to acquire it. And um, it's also because I, of them that the uh, outcome seems to be so um, uh, dangerous sounding. Do they, I, I'm sure that as, you know, I'm training, but they're, I, they're, you know, I'm assuming that they are, that I'm like being encouraged, right, to like join in this, um, in this effort or at least I'm being told about this for no. the reason of like that I could join right uh, no like they're not trying to engage you in that way instead what they're doing is they are teaching you what is capable from one individual mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but they're doing it from 13 minds right they're when I asked if you're guarded or open, basically, if you were open, that would have been an avenue for them. They would have tried. No, 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 no. Not, not, not like inviting me to oh. be part of their, you <laughs> the know, mission. mind a polycule or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The mission. Their mi the mission, right? Yes, that is a a part of it. Yes, they okay. are not physical beings. So, from what you can tell, like you could, and again, I don't know if Lupita is very strong, like you know, physically. I'm assuming. You know, yeah, right? Like a bit? 
Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, you could probably knock all 13 of them on their asses in like, you know, a minute or so tops. They're not, they do not appear to be very physically minded. Okay, and they're making it clear to me that this is a very dangerous, dangerous mission um, and that the end result is really not guaranteed. Uh, do they make it seem like a slip and slide mission to me? Um, they say that they would make it seem less of a slip and slide mission if you help Mo and get the data. With the information okay. that you are able to get from them, it sounds like the mining situation, like you won't know your way around, you won't know exactly where to strike, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like you could do a lot of damage based on the fact that their defense structures have been basically pulled out, removed. Um, because of corporate, you know, under financing. Um, but to know for certain, you would need the scans from the ship. All right. So I guess, I mean, I would learn as much as I could from them. I would be curious about, you know, their culture, you know, their ancient culture and like what happened to the rest of them. So it's entirely up to your uh, decision as a player to determine whether or not you buy into the idea that they claim to be direct descendants or like connected still due to their mm-hmm. conscience blending to the Ur themselves. That is a very tall oh. order. <laughs> like that is not something that you know is very common, right? Um, and they aren't able to answer any of your like more like problematic questions when it comes mm-hmm. to understanding the Ur. So there's definitely room for doubt here. I mean, Lupita is a believer. I think she's a seeker. I think she's always kind of looking for the mystery in the universe. And I don't know that she like immediately becomes devoted to their story, but I think she files it under like the powerful mysteries, right, of the Ur. And, yeah. But definitely not one that you open up to in the process, because you're not sure yet. No, yeah, I mean, I have my own my own core faith that guides me, and they're not, like, interlocking with that in, like, a perfect way. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. If I run into other Ashtari, I would definitely bring it up with them. Okay. So then we get into the out of free play segment, uh, starting with John. Well, John, you get some free play, obviously, if there's anything that you want to do and engage with. But also, after that, everyone's coming to you with the same problem. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you do not have to take this mission. It's not mandatory to do anything in this game. But they are all putting it to you, it seems, that uh, this is a mission to do. So, what would you be doing Uh Uh, well, I was gonna. I was thinking about training um, in resolve. Yeah, it's fine. Downtime. Uh, which would, yeah, which would be like him going out and just doing scoundrel shit out amongst like the. Uh... There's gambling locations. Yeah, that exactly. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of present inside of the senior elements of the rebel base. Like, it's not a bunch of people who are you know. Uh, it's not a Christian Minecraft server. There are people doing some right. Right. Know, fun things, drinking, smoking, etc. So not yeah. Hard. So I figured that would be his first thing. And then he comes back, and everybody's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and he's just like, all right, all right. So Tarosh first, and then everybody's like, all right. So we're getting more pieces of the puzzle. Um, Thane comes to you with information, yep. I believe, as well. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, then, of course, uh, Lupita after that, I would assume, or before that? About after. In tandem. In tandem. Okay, you, you can both come at the same time. And, uh... yeah, or all just talking simultaneously. Just... And then I just <laughs> pop up and start talking about like the little just... image people. And then, uh, and then uh, pops, up, rubbing his... pops up behind everybody and is holding an image. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I'm afraid. Please help me. I need to get back to work. <laughs> no, it, it's like the new Star Trek that uh, Scotty with his little like goblin child, whatever the oh, hell yeah, it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> For whatever reason, the engineer just gets a small. Chance. Um, can you please unhand the staff, please? Yeah, my friends away. Are you? <laughs> oh, dude, no! Oh. I thought we were friends. What? Anyway, um. <laughs> I mean, if it's a side thing, um, I didn't think I would always, it, if that was the way I was going to go, it would always be in a mine, uh, given my upbringing. But, um, I just want to get a consensus. Do you feel that this would be good for the cause uh, between you, Thane, and you, Lupita? Well, yes. Uh, according to the information that was shared by the 13, mm -hmm. who, as far as I can tell, seem trustworthy to me, there's um, something that we can glean from uh, data that was recovered by Mo, this Mo character, or that is held by Mo, um, and John, correct me if I'm wrong. We need to rescue Mo. Mo still on the Magistrate of Iron, the crashed battle cruiser. So we've that got was... to get into that battle cruiser and extract the right. person and the data. That's the one yeah. that Terosh was asked to destroy. No, so no. Terosh was okay. told that they're going to destroy a mining facility. Right. They're hopeful okay. that yes. Mo will return, but if some random crew of people with a shuttle or a skiff were able to get to the Magistrate of Iron and extract Mo with the data, it would prove more useful. So you're kind of getting the same beat. Big ship crashed. Crew went out. <coughs> right. Excuse me, hold on. Ugh. Big ship mm -hmm. crashed. There is data on the ship. The last crew that went out there is hasn't returned. They've been gone for two days past when they were supposed to return. Presumed to be out there. If you can get that information, it would help with the mining thing because the ship did a full body or full planet scan. Right, right. All hegemonic structures or all hegemonic allied structures. So the uh, presumption from uh, higher ups. They were basically pinpointing all non-hegemonic allied structures, and we're going to glass the non-hegemonic uh, ones. Luckily, you had an orbital cannon. Or they had an orbital cannon. Yes. So I'm kind of like, hmm. At the very least, we should extract Mo. And he just kind of does a couple spins in his chair. <laughs> I can understand your hesitation, Captain, not wanting to die in a mine, given your upbringing. You know what? I Fuck it. Share, I share a similar <laughs> canter in that regard. He just cuts you off. You know what? Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> I literally, literally, <laughs> literally, yeah, sorry. Just looking faint out of the eyes as he's about to say, uh, I know you don't then want he to stands, do it. Fuck it. Stands up, walks right by him. <laughs> he's like, all right, let's go. Okay. So you, you know that the ship will not be able to kind of move across the planet without kind of getting noticed. The shuttle will be a little better, but still not completely undetected. And if you were to take a skiff out to the crash site, it would be easier for you to remain undetected by other by, by you know, enemy forces, but it will be harder for you to get there just physically in a tasking right. sense. Uh. So we're currently in the job planning stage. Definitely prefer subtlety. I'm assuming that everybody else would feel the same. I will accompany you on this mission. I will not, uh, I won't stay behind. My expertise is also in infiltration. There's things that need to be hacked or bypassed. I can be of use. Lovely. Uh, well, actually, it was, um, that's right, uh, volunteers, I know, points to Terosh, she's like, I know you already did before I even really know what's, what's going on, so. <laughs> He's still it's a one. Um, uh, I'll join, I'll, 
I'll go with you all to make sure Tarish doesn't talk to strangers. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Hey. He told me so to know I, let him. I wanted to. That's fair. You know, I'd let him snoop us, so that's that's good. Um, <laughs> what are you saying, Johnny? Oh, I was just saying that if there is a fight, I want to be in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it. <laughs> what else, Sean? Uh, any, any any other volunteers? We got Thane, we got yeah. Lupita, we got... If you think I'll be useful. Couldn't hurt. Get some breaks. Uh, I'll tell. Alright, Medic, love that. Then I guess he, uh, I guess I'll call the pilot and be like, hey, you, uh, you want to drive this thing? Or Oh, I wouldn't trust anyone else to drive it. Perfect, love that. <laughs> I'm assuming right, we there were teams. finger guns with that statement. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, love that. <laughs> Captain, we're not just going for rescue, right? I mean, we can snoop around for other stuff. Yeah. If there's one thing you know I love doing, it's snooping. All right. We're definitely going to grab anything that's not nailed down, if possible. Okay. Is that everybody, then? Pause the music here. I'm going to move us to a different map. We are still in the job planning segment. I just want to make sure we understand what the look and the dynamic of it is. And also, um, the shuttle's there just in case it's what you decide to utilize. I'm presuming that's the middle ground, so there's like a lot of my mentality kind of being, that's probably the choice you're going to make, but I don't want you to think that I'm forcing you to make that choice. There's acquiring a skiff if you can. And there's also just flying your big ass ship to it, not caring who sees you or not. Oh, we said subtlety. Right? Still, it's, yeah, I said subtlety. So infiltration would probably be our uh, job type, right? Yeah. Well, is there going to be enough room for all of the, um, all of us of the crew going, and then also the people we're rescuing? Yeah, you don't know how many people are present. But uh, so... you would know that the total, like, large number is 15. So will they be uh, able to board the ship? Yes. Will they be comfortable? Probably not. Does... Worst case, Ontario, That's we just need to get the, da- the, the data from them. Yep. Sorry, we'll Jesus. play one more time, Steve. <laughs> Worst case, well, Ontario. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Worst case, Ontario. Love we just need that. to get the data from them. So we would have, um, if we're doing the shuttle, and I'm assuming... I'm just going to continue assuming that's the case until someone says otherwise. Well, the skiff or the shuttle? To the group. Shuttle. You mean our shuttle? Or do you mean like... Your shuttle, yep. Yeah, our shuttle, yeah. Yeah, a skiff would give you the best, like infiltration quiet stealth because no one's going to care about a skip moving across the waters in the land but the problem with it is is if you do get engaged you have no quick fallback the I... shuttle is potentially there's a possibility for detection there because your shuttle's not the smallest of things but um, it is fast and the pilot you have allows you to kind of get out of the space without um, well, with worry, but like with less worry than you would if you were trying to pilot a skiff. Exactly. And then your ship can't land, so you'd basically have to detach on shuttle or like zip line down from the ship, and it would have to maintain kind of like a hover presence above the uh, the wreckage, which would just be like signal, 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 signal. I'm right here. I'm right here. Look at me. I have a question. Hmm. Will the choice of which uh, transport we take, will will that kind of uh, impact engagement role, or are we kind of just looking at it will? Okay. So mm-hmm. I would say this. If we take the, like, the one up from the smallest, not the skiff, but the shuttle. Yeah. Um, can Lupita, like, like act 
to like disrupt um to kind of bend the way around it to kind of like disrupt detection. um detection yeah. i mean just enough to give us a slight advantage in some way absolutely fine okay now i think we all agree that the uh engagement method is infiltration for mm -hmm. the mission yeah yeah okay and then we are moving into the next step which is engagement rule, right? Oh, item loadouts, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so the detail. Um, we already know what the plan is. We know what we're moving into. You're going to fly to the Magistrate of Iron, land the shuttle near or on it, enter into the ship to find the survivors or just the entirety of the crew um, of the uh, team that came out here initially, and then once you um, rescue them with the data, you're going to return back to base. So this is basically a two-job job, because once you have the data, the second job will be infiltrating the mine. Does that make sense? It's, it's, a, lead. it's a lead up. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, my I'm gonna take a. I'm going to have a light load. I'm going to take my weapon, which counts for two. And then I'm also going to take, can I take maps and charts yeah. to help our, our navigation? Okay. Yeah. So there would be some limited information the planet. on, um, not so much the planet, but the location of the Magistrate of Iron. Because remember, they've been out there. They've acquired information. They pulled the, um, the mm -hmm. STL drive off of it. They pulled other stuff off of it. So they have mm -hmm. a mapping of the ship and its kind of environs. Okay. Okay, so that's your loadout. Anybody else start planning your stuff out as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the same one yeah, I had before. Mm -hmm. That was like Thank five people talking at the same time. I just want to make sure we have it. Was that everybody saying at the exact same time they're just taking what they took last time? No. Okay, you didn't say oh, that. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a communicator. Very good. I'm taking a communicator. <laughs> Vision enhancing goggles and a blaster pistol, and then I have, have a small drone that just I guess is is in italics, which means I always have it, right? Yeah. Or I it's free or whatever. Right. And it says I get a genius pet. When do I get that? I don't know. <laughs> Never. I'm also taking a light load. I can take my legitimate hegemonic ID for free because it's in italics just in case there's some snoopers in uniform or from the space guild. Maybe we can pass off as hegemonic with that. I'll take my hacking tools in case there's some computers or something. Spy gear. I don't know what's in that, but it sounds cool. And a communicator. <laughs> right? Spy gear? Spy gear. That, that, that could be one. anything. It looks like that one. Tarosh, are you taking the same gear from last time, or? Um, I'm taking a fine fibro, uh, fibro blade, and communicator, and blast pistol. Cool. So light load. Okay, sounds like everybody's got a pretty solid idea on what the loadout's going to be, right? Yep. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Who am I missing? Hi. Captain Jax. Okay. So you're on the ship. You move towards the shuttle. Um, the ship is currently in dock. So the ship didn't land because your ship doesn't really, like the big ship doesn't really land like planet side or anything. It's more or less basically suspended inside of a spaceport. And so you can detach the shuttle from it and then exit out of the kind of large uh, bay that you're in um, and exit out that way. Um, I just want to be sure, too, is there anybody that has any desires on... Uh, do we have a gambit? Yes, we, because... Total? Uh, we have a refresh. It's two total, right? 
Yes. Okay. When we start, we get a gambit somewhere around. Oh, do we? We start yeah. with two. <laughs> Are we starting with an extra one, John? Is that what you're saying or no? Yeah, because my starting ability is serendipitous. Cool. Your crew starts with plus one. Okay. So engagement roll. Um, so we're discussing that as you are you boarded the shuttle, you start making your way across the planet. Um, not across the planet. It's not terribly far away. I mean, it's not walking distance, that's for sure. But it's not like for a light shuttle, it's not going to be super huge distances we're talking about here. Um, you make your way that way. Um, let's go ahead and get the engagement roll out of the way so I have an mm -hmm. idea of what we're walking into. So as far as uh, major advantages, you have one for daring. It's particularly bold or daring. You're just jumping right into it despite having heard what the mission is about. Um, and you literally going, said, fuck it. You're going for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I would say, though, in my opinion, it is not the strongest approach. Um, not worth a penalty, though. I'm just going to go with the plus one for the advantage. Uh, can you or your friends or contacts provide aid or insight? I think that has been put to a measure. So I'm going to go yeah. ahead and allow for plus one. But are there enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? Yes, there are, unbeknownst to you. So you're just going to... Those two are going to cancel each other out. Are there any other elements that I want to consider, or you want to consider? Me, I guess me. Maybe a low tier target <laughs> will give you. It is not a. This is not a low tier target. This is a high tier target, as we discussed. It is currently the Star Smith's guild primary focus because of the loss of that FTL drive. So I'm going to put a minus one there. So we have. Uh, Go ahead. Um, I was hoping we could gain a die from Lupita, like focusing on shielding. Yeah, and from detection. I, I think it by itself is definitely something, but I'm not certain that you'll be able to get there without issue, right? I don't think that it's going to be something that once on site you're going to be able to maintain unless you do nothing else. Well, no, just for our travel there. Right. The ship still has a signature, though. So, like, if sure. they're, if the Starsmith Guild is kind of keeping an eye on this location, you would literally have to, the whole time, be focused on that meditation. So it's up to you. That'll be in a tune roll, which is happening in the engagement step. But if you were to succeed at it, I would say that it would provide the advantage. That would be the result of the dice roll. Okay. So do you want to be meditating the whole time, or do you want to be engaging? Wait, the whole time that we're traveling, no, or no, no, or no, you no. won't give once no, you are the whole time <laughs> we're engaging. Yeah. yeah, once you are there, the ship is going to. If you stop cloaking, it is still going to be a ship that has a and signature, it'll, and it'll ping wherever we end up. Right, and I'm not saying that your ping is going to absolutely nullify the effect. It's just going to, if you decide to. Focus on meditation and nulling your ship using the ingestion of the way technique you learned from um, uh, Kane. What do what do folks think? I don't think it's worth the engagement. I think right. yeah. you have to think about this system less like D and D and more like a TV show. And narratively, every time our crew gets in the shuttle, we're assuming that your character is throwing up some sort of way barrier that wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. give us any plus one special advancement unless you were to like lock yourself in. For this episode, my character is just gonna give us that shield because I'm a little scared this is gonna go poorly, and like mm -hmm. I need my character for this episode to lock in and make the shield and that's what gives us, us the plus one advantage. And focusing you know on I mean? that analogy as well, as the director, I never set up sets for attacking you or the, the, the special effects budget right. to shoot you out of the sky. So the, there's like a guarantee that's already present from me to you. That right. You're going to arrive on the scene without issue. We're, we're right? going to get to scene two. This yeah, is yeah, but, open but, with but, us okay, getting but, there. But following, but following that train of thought, yeah. and not, I'm not trying to like be contrary or no, whatever no, no. Yeah. but see. like following that train of thought it's like even with with kind of like the last mission it's not necessarily like oh you're gonna shoot me out of the sky but 
there's a difference between me getting from like from me getting to to the site without being followed you know right. and giving them like last a mission, head start to come get me last is a great site. analogy so when the claymore came on side what happened was is after the engagement role that was a thing that popped up because of the engagement role but it was countered by an action an activity yeah an action right the action could be something that you do but what i'm saying to you here is if you wish to kind of confine yourself to like the center of no the no ship, i understand that i mean i yeah. understand that i was just like i think that you can like you can have it whatever way you want it if you're saying like oh well it's like a tv show right. then you know we, you can kind of shift it in any way you want it but what you're saying is that for there to be some kind of benefit i have to like pay for it yeah similarly and... he had to stay on the ship and communicate with them right right right, right. okay deck. he wasn't allowed to go run around the so, adventure while that was happening it, like this is an infiltrating mission mm -hmm. where staying hidden is important um but we're saying it's not that important it's more important for me to like to go on the on the like it's up on to the you. adventure or whatever. It's, a, it's up to you. Well, it's not you up to me. Sure. I think it's up to, like, the captain. Oh, yeah. Right? What do you want? Uh, what do you yeah. want, like, Jess? Like, I think yeah. that, that <laughs> I have to, like, in the story, I would also follow the captain's lead and direction from other adventure, you know, people that are very yeah. experienced. Well, this would definitely be a newer power because the ingestion of the way techniques are kind of like, nulling is kind of something you're mm -hmm. learning, right? You're practicing here. Mm -hmm. sure. So if you wish to engage with it, you would basically tell the captain, hey, this is what I've been studying. And then I guess then that would put um, like the onus on Jazz to determine whether or not he's willing to let you try this experimental technique and try and hide the ship from like you know view or mm -hmm. if he wants you like on the side or on the ship to like use your brain powers to see if you can't find the people in this massive battle cruiser because scans may not be able to find them they may be hiding for more traditional like techniques to find them or technical mm -hmm. techniques to find them and put it that way no he would um he would think um this is really new this whole thing that they're they just learned but i do know they know how to find people like blobs right yeah they happen last so i'd rather episode. i'd rather get the help that we got last episode okay so you're coming with us narratively that makes sense yeah absolutely okay so the ship um i am going to blop it on there and uh, do me a favor, uh, Zach, see if you can't move that bad boy. All right. So as you approach the ship, um, uh, Thane, you detect that there is a very faint signature of a vehicle, like an engine that's been active. But it's not like a massive engine or anything. It is a very faint vehicle engine um, in line with what you'd expect from a skiff or a speeder. Scanning... Uh, with your very limited scan systems, you are able to detect a bright reddish-orange vehicle that's kind of parked on the side of one of the core thruster units of the side of the Magistrate of Iron. It looks like there are um, positions, like a lot of holes in the space, that would allow for access into the craft. But what you notice is it looks like a lot of the ship is probably submerged inside of the water. And also the area around the ship you had that kind of algae layer on the water normally. It looks like all of that has been dispersed in a nice kind of like outline that goes probably about a hundred or so feet away from the ship to the shores and you know into the, the water. There's like this this outline where the algae is just gone. It doesn't exist. Make sense? Yep. Uh, Captain, looks like we might have scavengers in the ship. There's a skiff just landed that just there. I think he's getting pudding. He was like, I did oh. captaining, it's pudding time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey y'all. Should there's, there's I... some scavengers on the ship. <laughs> should I should I disable the skiff? <laughs> <laughs> 
that could like destroy it. <laughs> Shuttle. Doesn't I don't have, know. Shuttle doesn't really have guns. <laughs> okay. It's just fast. We can convince if we run into them. We could just convince them to leave. So we don't have to have a first liability on our operation. Well, if you want to land near it, there's a pretty decent section um, mm -hmm. on the craft that looks like it was once like a, a port space or like a, a fighter ejection space that has like a nice flat panel to it. You can kind of see it there on the north side. You can also, with the shuttle, land on water uh, due to its airtight nature. It is very buoyant. Um, so you could do that as well. And you should be able to turn it. I think it if you want I well. would prefer to like land it up like that so it's over the port. Okay. So very quickly kind of come in, spin the ship around, back down, slowly landing. You can hear mm -hmm. the loud landing gears kind of drop out from underneath. Hit the uh, normal port mechanism that you would exit out of um, is uh, available to you. If you just kind of back up a little bit there. Um, and you can kind of drop out near the skiff if you'd like. Um, there's also opportunity for you to drop out the sides, which would be underneath the uh, nacelles or engines on the sides of the ship. You can see that on the craft itself, there are spaces on the side that are air docks or airlocks that can be open, breached, and allow you to drop out. Make sense? Uh, okay, so right, then right. to double make sure I part. <laughs> we have plus one, plus one on advantage because it's a particularly bold or daring activity. Um, we discussed that the uh, vulnerability, you're not really hitting a target where they're weakest or anything, um, nor is there, like, it's not really, it, again, I'm not putting any negatives for it being kind of a particularly not strong approach. It's not so weak that I see it deemed a disadvantage. Um, your friends or contacts have provided you insight, so you have plus one dice from that. That's two dice so far, um, plus the one standard for fortune. Um, and then the enemies or rivals inter are technically interfering in the situation. Starsmith Guild is active in the region, so minus one dice on that. And then lastly, we discussed, are there any other elements that I might want to consider? No, it is kind of a high tier target. So minus one. So we're looking at minus two and plus three, I think. Is my math good? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. We're, we're looking at a static roll of plus one dice. Um, and you can perform a gambit, I believe, on your fortune roll here. So um, who wants to roll it? Sorry, what was that part about tier, John? This it's... is a high tier target. High tier target? Okay. Uh, but... It doesn't count as security or anything, right? Uh, it would be considered security because it has to do with the Starsmith's Guild's desire to secure the FTL drive. Uh, do you have a, a benefit? Yeah, my infiltrator ability says you are not affected by quality or tier when you buy past security measures. Yeah, so basically you've got your card, you're punching in kind of like broadcast signals as you're kind of moving through uh, space to get to the ship. And basically you don't know where the Starsmith's Guild's located, you don't know where they're, you know, out and about. But basically, there's like a register that's been kind of d d brought forward or broadcast here that would, s it, 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 I mean, obviously, you're broadcasting your presence here the second you kind of enter the space. Well, the second you stop um, uh, way blocking and entering the space. But um, this, you feel, will definitely kind of gum up the gear, so to speak. You know the bureaucracy of these guilds is... Uh, <laughs> maddening um, so you basically saying uh, I'm here on official hegemonic duties will make them have to double triple cross check to determine whether or not they can engage your ship or not if they choose to you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, it's going to take them a bit to realize, hey, wait a minute. And that is sufficient <laughs> for me to go ahead and say that minus 1D for high tier targeting will be removed. Okay, so we're, looking, <laughs> we're looking at a total of plus 3 minus 1. So that will be plus two net, and so that's three dice. Um, who's rolling it? We made the captain do it last time. That was awful. 
I think it's a great idea. And, and obviously think... to understand the premise here that I'm coming with, like, uh, uh, or mentioning on my side, just to make sure we understand, like, there are certain effects that have been kind of put into place. So if you roll poorly here, right, then those things kind of work against you. So if, you know, Thane, he's like, yeah, broadcasting that, you know, we were on official hegemonic duty, that could be like a red flag, right, if you roll really bad. And they're like, F uh, no? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> um, if, you know, you're kind of broadcasting the way out to kind of block, like you're creating a, a way beacon, but we don't know if there's a way user on the other side or not, like in the Starsmiths Guild working with them um, and rolling poorly here might kind of lean that direction, right? Um, there's a lot of, like, interplay narratively that we're going to engage with here um, based on just the result of the fortune roll like last episode you rolled poorly <laughs> and it <laughs> resulted in there being kind of a thing to have to deal with right off the bat so who is it what do i click <laughs> uh, I open up the, <laughs> the chip sheet the stardust serenade and like Underneath contacts on the right side, there should be a roll fortune button, and then it should prompt you for bonuses from there. Yeah? Okay. Number of dice, you said three? Yeah. Yep. Nope. It'll ask a bunch of questions. Okay, so we got a four. A four or five is a risky position. Um, okay. Great. So we definitely understand that we are in a risky position here. Okay. Um, as you move and land the ship and it kind of settles down, um, Oren, what's your first kind of goal here once you've landed? Is there anything that you wish to do to kind of neutralize the, uh, you know, uh, detectability of the shuttle. Oren? Yeah. Oh, I I imagine he would have done his best to, like, pull out the landing gear and stuff well ahead of approach, so that yeah. way it wasn't, like, coming, you know, like, those gears and things aren't coming out, and then, like, doing his best to maneuver into position and glide it in quickly and drop as lightly as possible and then kill kill engines, kill everything, and, like, quick kill switches, and then get ready to fire up if we need to take off quick. Okay. I imagine the shuttle is built to, like, land quick and, like, take off quick again. Perfect. Um, okay. And then, um, anybody on shuttle um, have anything that they wish to kind of add to the, the beat of landing? Okay. If no, then once you've landed the craft, um, you start deplaning or de-shuttling. Uh, and I believe it's everybody but Oren that is leaving the shuttle. Is that accurate? Unless Cap says otherwise. Yeah, you probably want to keep it hot. That's why I'm sitting here. It's off, but like my key is in the ignition, if that makes sense. I'm sure you're just holding the key. <laughs> yeah. And I think a number of us have communicators. <laughs> For sure. And as yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and for comms purposes, like if you start splitting up, communication devices will be necessary. Um, but uh, if you don't and you kind of stay close to one another, then you should be fine. Okay, so you enter into the shuttlecraft, or you exit the shuttlecraft, and you enter into the space. Is there anything before you enter into the Magistrate of Irons Hall that you would like to discuss? To, like observe, investigate, check anything you'd like to just ask about before we move into the ship itself. Um, um, as we approach, and I guess the oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I want to do a sweep for uh, life forms. Okay, so there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot kind of popping inside of your head, but most of it you very quickly filter, right? It's like pulling the scum off of the surface of, you know, the, the pond. And the reason why these things kind of keep popping up is you realize that the water itself is teeming with life. It is just an absolute, just boiling pot of life. Uh, there appear to be like, you know, fish and 
like you know aquatic life forms in it um, there's the algae we've discussed there's just a lot going on here when it comes to the way and these mm -hmm. founts are like very potent but you're able to kind of sift through it easily enough um, and focus in and you realize that there are three locations inside of the magistrate of iron that appear to have people or at least the approximation of what you would assume are people towards the northern side of it which you assume is the front of the ship there are two life forms both are strong and both are from what you can feel empathically very paranoid right now one of them is a life form that you've never, ever detected in your life before. A very unique type of Xenos that you've never, ever, like, sensed. But beyond that, the other one seems to be pretty standard humanoid. There is one life form that's kind of straight out from your location. If you were to walk into the ship and just walk straight forward, uh, you would come to this within ten or so minutes. Uh, the life form, it appears to be domesticated um, and I mean that to say this is more like a pet right this is not a, um, a person this feels very much like a, a creature that's kind of just milling about inside of the space with no concern or care well it's mine now <laughs> <laughs> so it's mine now <laughs> um, okay I mean you gave me a lot of detail um, can I roll to a like to attune to get anything else well there's one last one um uh, there yeah. doesn't feel like there are two more life forms maybe three uh, these are very faint and what you would be able to determine is, is that's because they are either uh, in a state of starvation or in a state of injury that has weakened them to the point where they are currently dying okay. um if you'd like to attune, you can to kind of see if there's anything that's kind of being left out or is kind of hiding behind the veil. Mm -hmm. uh, risky position, right? Correct. Effect, standard, limited, great, extreme. This is definitely going to be a limited effect. Uh, no bonuses. Just one I don't think. Thing. I'll take a stress. Okay. To do one bonus. Success. Ooh. There is something that you aren't looking at because your focus is on the ship that keeps pinging behind you. And as you kind of start focusing your attention in that direction, it seems like there is at least one, possibly more, life forms a ways away, but still close enough for you to kind of register. Uh, somewhere over on this island to the south. And it's basically just a, like you saw in the kind of picture of the, the crags, it's like a massive kind of upwards cragging of like spiky, jutting, broken rock cliffs, red in coloration, uh, with some small little thoroughfares or passes kind of all throughout. Okay. And the best way to describe the vibe that you get from that is it very much feels like someone's looking over your shoulder or someone's looking at you. I uh, feel like we're being watched, so everybody be on your toes. I love that. <laughs> People look out. Anybody else have anything they want to engage with before they go in? Yeah, when we were approaching and just doing our brief light scans, is the ship completely derelict, or are, does it have systems on, some systems on, or active? Completely or offline. Okay. Just so, make sure we're not going to trip any security measures or anything that might still be active. Yeah, there might be, like, electronic functions for, like, refrigeration still on effect. Um, but there's really not much beyond that going on. And lights are okay. probably on as well in some spaces. Okay. Anybody else have anything else that they wanted to ask about? Okay. Oh, did you want to ask something? Go ahead, Magway. I want the pet. 
Okay, so you're focused on going towards the pet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, I, I guess the, the pet is very predetermined on whether or not Lupita mentions the pet. Does Lupita mention um, the pet? I would not, under any fucking circumstances, <laughs> call it a pet. I would say there is, um, you know, an, some form of, there's some life lesser form there. Lesser life form? <laughs> I wouldn't say lesser life form. I, I'm not trying to give well, you any keywords, any context to, <laughs> to enslave this baby. <laughs> would you only <laughs> mention that one, or would you have mentioned all? No, no. Uh, Y'all get, you know, the full picture, right? The full map. Like Lupita's got the motherfucking map, like uh, what you call it? like hologram. Yeah. And like here and here, Love and that. here's the life forms. Should we steer clear of that? You said there was a massive way user in there. Should we steer clear of that one? Or? A massive way user? No, right? Didn't you say there was. No, a... no, no. There's someone on the rocky ridge to the south that might yes. be watching you. <laughs> That's. I thought, I thought in the beginning you said that there was a life form. Okay. Two, two people in the, no, no, in the beginning. There's a life form that Lupita has never sensed before. Oh, that This one. is in reference mm -hmm. to Mo because Mo is a very unique Xenos. He's the only one of his kind that's known about. Well, and before that, there was also like the 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 ocean is like teeming with oh, okay. life. There's that. Too. And there's like a mm -hmm. massive yeah. life signature kind it, of it is a coming form. out of the mm -hmm. ocean. Yeah. And I'm not like I I'm not going to confuse y'all with, you know. Right. Sorry, with that piece. Your... Oh. Sorry, I got it. So yeah, there's two to the north. There's one about ten minutes straight forward. Uh, there's two to three others, possibly dying. Um, and those two to three were which direction? South, towards the engines, the back engines. Okay. Hmm. How many communicators do we have? <laughs> I have one. one. I have one. I have one. That sounds I like have we one. have at least three, so we could split the party. I think a better question is how many guns do we have? I, have I, I don't have one, so I, I do. Like, one. I'd like to go with a, at least one the gun. The military man didn't bring a gun? Lupita has a melee weapon, and she's very mm -hmm. competent with it. Yeah, Lupita can, mm -hmm. uh, has a, like this antique scimitar Love that it. seems I, very I, inappropriate I, I, for sp <laughs> base, but... Give me the, yeah yeah give me the the not Jedi and the giant monster that that's good sounds like a good body <laughs> there we go yeah I think Tarish and I can call a monster that, that is a little what? racist <gasps> sorry academy <laughs> training at its worst <laughs> blame the hegemony <laughs> blame the training I'm oh, still a little shreds. brainwashed I'm still getting this brainwashing out you know <laughs> okay so well, one group will be Tarish. Thane and Zelri? No. You. Tarosh, Thane, and you. Lupita. Yeah. Lupita. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's three out of the six. We need two more groups. I don't know if you guys are very good at math, but it's probably going to be pairs. Yeah, I was going to say it's pairs, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Unless you're okay with sending Dax after the not a pet Right? Creature. I'm going to go, like, if you send me <laughs> off by myself, I'm going to end up finding this animal. And, so, it's, it's the and sea I'm gonna story. come back and everyone's going to be like, I got my part of it, I got my yeah, part just, of it. And then I'm like, it's the sea story. Animal. It's this cute dog and she's like, whoa, and then she runs into the room she's like, I love you. And then it just like the thing, it like, <laughs> 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 like, the thing. I that. like, I think I found out what the, the lip eggs turn into. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, excellent. So we have excellent, I think, excellent. I think Karosh, uh, uh, Pita, uh, and uh, Jazz. Did you say you had a blaster? Yeah, I've got two. I'm gonna take I Kane with me. You gonna take who? Kane. Kane? Yeah. Kane's not here. Kane isn't even part of our crew. Kane's not a part of your crew. You never asked him if he wanted to come along on this mission. He would have. Never mind. That's not what I. No, 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 no. Lupita. Oh, I'm thinking. God damn it. It's your Jedi. You do it's not a have. character. It's I know, you're thinking about character. sexy Andy Jedi. I get it. I mean, me yeah, and I this whole time. I was thinking of Thane because they fucking rhyme. Thane and Kane do rhyme. Good point. So, Jazz and Thane are going together. And which direction are you going? 
You're the captain. You decide. I'm sorry, that threw me off. Which what were the three directions? Again? North, straight ahead, and south. I guess we'll go straight ahead. Okay. Who are you sending to the north? I want to send toward the weak signals of the doctor and the mechanic. They don't have a gun, so are you handing them your blaster? I have a gun. Oh, you got, okay, great. Cool, cool, cool. They do have a gun. And then the other two would be Lupita and um, Tarosh. They're going to the front. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Um, as you are exiting or entering into the ship um, and start to move, um, Orin, about a minute or two passes when they first enter in. You can hear the comms through the ship. The ship has a communicator as well. Um, and everything's kind of regulating through you. So you're hearing all the chatter. You're kind of told about there being some sort of signature out towards the uh, rocks, towards uh, the island there on the south side. Is there anything that you wish to engage with or do to engage it? That? No, it... no, I don't think so. Okay, so I will say after that minute or two, then if you're not kind of thinking about it, you're just paying attention. You see what appears to be a bright red flare fly up from a cracky recess on that island, and then detonate up in the air, kind of a bright, brilliant red, which is very much hegemonic coloring for. Combat flares. Okay. Immediately hits on the comms. Uh, we uh, might have company. This is about when um, the groups start to kind of hit some positions inside of the Magistrate of Iron of Import. So for the Northern group, as you're making your way towards the front and right about before that uh, discussion is had, there is a hallway that seems to lead towards the bridge. And Tarosh, you're familiar with ships enough. You know It's mostly where you've been since you got off your, your home planet. Uh, you're familiar with ships to understand like this is a bottleneck. This is a choke. There was a fight that happened here. You can see blaster scoring on the walls. You can see what appears to be like blood splatter and parts of armor and the like kind of dashed all over the space. And from the looks of it, it looks like whoever was engaging in this fight was retreating down the corridor towards the front of the ship. Front. Okay. Do totally. you understand what I'm saying to you? Oh, so they're like, um, um, say that again, sorry. <laughs> so you know like, that there um... are two life signals on the craft towards the bridge. You can see around you that there has been a battle in this long hallway that seems to go towards the front of the ship from where you are. There's blasters yeah. scoring all over the place and armor and bits and parts of uh, people all over the place, right? No physical mm -hmm. bodies remaining, but like it definitely looks like there was a fight here. And it looks like whoever yeah. was fighting on one side of it, the people who were um, kind of inside the ship already, were pushed back and kept falling back from what you can tell of the battle fight or of the fight, so the hallway is covered with blaster fire, and it looks like mm -hmm. people were being pushed back into the pushed. front of the ship. They were falling back into away from the, from the bridge. They were falling back yeah. to the bridge. Oh, okay. To the bridge. To the to, bridge. Oh, to the bridge. Uh, can we try to communicate with the bridge? Well, hold on. So Please. that that is right about when Orin is about to okay. drop down that message. Mm -hmm. So this is all kind of happening simul, right? The group that traveled towards the e, uh, straight ahead uh, metric, um, it comes to a point where you see that there are a number of doors that have been blown off of their framing um, into what appear to be small little residences, right? Small little spaces on the battle cruiser where families were kept because it's like Star Trek, right? The hegemony is like, I want everybody to be happy on their ships. Bring your kids, bring your wives even though we're sending you to a war, right? Because <laughs> sci-fi, we love to see it. Inside, you can see what appears to have been a slaughter. It looks like people were shot and put to death 
in these small little tight compact cells. Um, from the scoring that you see here, Jack, uh, you realize that the blasters that were used here were not hegemonic. These hegemonic individuals, the civilians, and also like the, you know, some of the soldiery, um, were basically killed, slaughtered inside of the ship after it crashed. So instead of saving anyone, it looks like the rebels instead, when they came to engage the space, started killing everyone. Do you understand what I'm saying? John? Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, John, who did you have with you again? Thane, not Kane. Okay, Thane. Um, so, Thane, this is standard operating procedure um, for hegemonic sides. Like, when you dash a ship um, and you're, you know, boarding it, boarding actions aren't to take prisoners unless that was the mission. If it's literally a scourge situation and you're, like, you know, taking over the craft, everyone inside dies. And that appears to be what has happened here. But, but, you said, but it's an inverse. The blaster scoring that you can see, it doesn't look like it's uniform. So blaster scoring from hegemonic, it's going to all be the same rifle, right? Standard rifle, standard sidearm. Everybody's given the same weaponry. This looks like it's a hodgepodge of blasters like you guys have, right? If you were in a firefight, all the scoring would be very different. Because, you know, uh, Jazz's blasters are probably really cool, like, you know... He's got like six shooters, right? But they're blasters. And then yep. Tarosh probably has the best assault rifle like style weapon that he could find. Um, and then Dax has probably got I don't know. She's got a heater, I'm sure. Like nice little like standard stormtroopery blaster rifle, right? So I like modified it. Yeah, like it, she's got like a cool like triple scope, right? <laughs> so she can just like switch it to like whatever sight line she wants. Like she's very technical in her stuff. But yeah. Similarly, if a group of rebels, like the ones back uh, home, went in with their blaster weapons, they would do very similar firework. There were no prisoners yeah. taken here. Yeah, kind of just look at Jazz and like, such a waste, wasted life. I thought we were supposed to be better than the hegemony. These people could have been, <laughs> could have been turned, brought to our side. The cause hey, is going to need all types, laborers cooks cleaners these people could have been given lives and jobs and now they'll have now they have nothing this is fair but you gotta remember when you're in the, the heat of it uh as you probably know these things happen toward the back as you two are approaching and moving towards what uh dax you realize very quickly is the engine room um it, it's not hard for you to understand that um you're on a ship. You know exactly where everything's basically supposed to be put for this thing to fly proper. The combat that you see kind of place here, you're seeing a lot of dead bodies that have been left behind, but you also see that it's because of flooding, right? It seems that there's a lot of flooding that's present here, and some of these people were caught in the element of the crash and were kind of left to drown. But it also looks like other bodies have just been left to just remain here because they were too hard to recover for other people. And the bodies that you're seeing that are present here are Imish. And it looks like the Imish were shot and they look like they have battle armor and gear as if they were raiding this place to attack it. Um, you start some scans. If you have a scanner, I don't know if you took one. Um, and you start moving towards the back when that message comes in. So, what does the message sound like, Zach? Uh, we, um, we might have some company. You see those hegemony flares? Uh, we're in the ship. Okay, well, I'd Please. like to report that there's been some flares and we might have company soon. I can fire up the shuttle, but I can't get to you inside the ship, obviously. Oh, um, that'd be too easy. Uh, then I guess I was radio. It's like, is there any anybody else make contact with the group that we're looking for? Negative. Wait, what was the question? Jack's, Jazz is asking if we've made contact with the group that we're looking for. Uh, we're approaching, but no contact. 
Well, keep going. You got an um, ETA on that uh, approach? Um, how far am I? A from... couple minutes, so you'll be there. A couple minutes? Yep. Do it. It's about how long we got before the combat <laughs> starts. Okay. So you folks move towards your goals. You do not, uh, you're not dissuaded from your uh, mission um, by the flare. I wanted to see if we could no. ping Mo on the ship's comms. Yep, so you realize that the comms on the ship are not active. The ship, oh, okay, okay, it's okay. very limited mm -hmm. function, like electronics, right? Not right. like, you know, ship systems. Um, as you're moving towards the back, though, uh, Lupita, mm -hmm. or towards the bridge, though, uh, this is Lupita and Terash, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The way connects with you for a second, and you can sense, like it's almost like a precognitive sense, that something, a shape that's kind of <laughs> present in the shadows, is about to come around the corner and start engaging you in a martial sense. You have positions for cover here. Um, mm -hmm. Do you wish to kind of um, move to the sides, or do you wish to kind of stand in the hallway, knowing that you're probably approaching who you think, um, and kind of surrender immediately? Uh, well, I would do, like, I would want to get undercover and, and mm -hmm. motion for, um, you know, find cover and then yeah. say, Mo, we're here to help. You hear like a toggle, uh, Tarash, which you know is like a toggle mm -hmm. on like a heavy, like machine blaster, like a big, mm -hmm. a big boy. Um, and then you hear Lupita say, Mo, we're here to help. And then you hear a, oh. <laughs> and then you see this very large red thing kind of block the passage in front of you, holding this massive, like, E-Web-style blaster, right? Um, look mm. down the hallway and go, Uh, you know Mo's name? Yes, we do. No, how, you, how you know Mo's name? Um, friend. Yes, from we do. <laughs> say, 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 send up from cover and point at himself. Friend, friend Tarash. Friend. Lupita is just like... <laughs> you, you kind of, you kind of like yeah. broadcast the next signal time, next time of like this. positive emotions to um, Mo. And um, you're kind of like also broadcasting like uh, image of Kane in your mind. To Mo. Oh no, that was Lupita just being annoyed. For oh, a <laughs> and then um, okay, okay, yes. yeah. uh, we've got um, yes, flash image of Thane, or your, your friend, the Kane. Oh my God, no! <laughs> now it's happening to me too. Uh, flash an image of Kane and say yes, we're your rescue party. Okay. And then he kind of like uh, turns back and says something and then him and another individual come out um, and the uh, individual in question um, appears to be dressed in hegemonic officer garb and is holding a pistol mm -hmm. and he's kind of wounded um, but not like so badly that like he's registering as near death. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry... Uh, you've got a hegemonic officer with oh, you? Oh, uh, no, 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 uh, no. And the guy says, no, 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 I, uh, no, we, we fucked up. No. <laughs> we, we boarded the ship and, um, they were watching the Starsmith Guild. And when we, uh, entered into the ship, they sent a convoy, um, uh, and a detachment of, um, soldiery. And uh, when we were trying to exit the ship and get back to our uh, speeder bike, they uh, were engaging. So me and Mo tried to hide, and one of the dead soldiers was nearby, or officer. I don't know how they work. So I just put on his clothes and tried to bullshit our way out of it, and uh, he gestures towards his wound. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. Oh, guys, didn't work. Well... We need to get the heck out of Dodge. Um, Am I here for this? Oh, no, no. no. I'm, off, fuck, I'm off, fucked off doing other things. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we wrap it up and it's like... Oh, yeah. wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, you need the thing. The thing. The important thing. Drive. Data. Data, Data drive. <sighs> yeah, um, about that. Um, 
We haven't about been, that. We haven't been oh, able to I get mean, it. Yes. We haven't been able to get it out of the uh, core unit, and we don't have any hackers' tools or anything to do it uh, because the guy we had who uh, did have that, uh, he made it to his speeder, and uh, well, he that I I'm I, I'm assuming since they sent you, he didn't make it back to base. I guess not. No. Where's the core? Um. Yeah, we need to get it. He, he leads you into the bridge, and kind of like you see, like the big space. It's uh, you know, well conditioned in, in in good good enough condition. And he gestures to a very large kind of core unit. Immediately, in the ping at, like our location to Thane. Thane, yeah. we need you here now. So this in is the comms hacker. This, we need. This is about when you two, that would be Thane oh. and Jazz, make it to the end point where you presume it's to be located. And inside of this space, when you kind of move towards it, there's like a broken door that's kind of like slightly ajar. Um, and when you kind of move over to it and are making noise, you start hearing a barking sound coming from the opposite side of the door. Um, as you approach, you kind of look inside, and there is a whole ass dog in there. <gasps> like just a regular ass dog? Just a just... regular ass dog. <laughs> <laughs> not an alien, not anything crazy. It is a dog. It has bright white fur, uh, which is light, slightly dirty. Uh, there's a bit of blood tracking on its face. Uh, you can see that inside of the room with it, it has been sustaining itself for the last few days on what appears to be uh, image flesh. Oh, uh, uh, hey, buddy. <laughs> Hello, doggy. Um, <laughs> what, what, you, what, oh my what, God. what what you eating there? And, huh? You you would think that a dog in this state would be like you know possibly paranoid or confused, but he just runs up to you and like jumps up, puts his paws on your chest, Jazz, like very excited <laughs> to see a person. And uh, if you let him, he will lick your face with his uh, blood stained face. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Seems like a cool dog. And this is about the moment where you guys get the uh, comms ping. Uh, Thane, we need you at the bridge as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a dog. Okay, cutting. Yes, we gotta go. Bring that dog. We'll bring the dog. Come with us, but come on. Cutting back to the back end of it, um, for the most uh, tragic. Uh, Zellery and Dax, you move, kind of wading through a little bit of water, um, as the back end of the ship, being the heaviest, has kind of had the most dip into the soft soil of the um, lake's bottom. Um and as you kind of press through the door into the space you were told by Lupita where these three signals are located, um, you see three individuals, each one of them being Imish, but they're wearing Starsmith's Guild uniforms. And one of them is holding a blaster and raises it up and points it at you. And in a week, just kind of soft very coarse voice. Who are you? F friend or foe? I'm Dax. And I'm a doctor. And I would point to like <laughs> oh. the symbol on my shirt. <laughs> Here to help. Here to help. And as you say, I'm a doctor, the gun just kind of falls out of the image's hand into the water. And you can see them just kind of like their head lulls back. And you would realize that they're in a state of um, kind of extreme exposure they're in water and you would also as you move over to it celery you would note that their leg has been pinned underneath what appears to be a coolant unit that has dropped and locked their leg against the uh the floor um to get to a little bit more kind of a graphic nature of it there's no blood it doesn't look like they the skin was pierced but because they've been locked here for a day or two um it does look like there are some <laughs> ration containers that were nearby, so they've been able to keep themselves sustained, but they look like they've run out. Um, and it also looks like they've been seated there for the better part of two days, so you can kind of imagine what the filth of the water around them is like. Mm -hmm. Gonna ignore it. And, uh, Dax, is, is there any way you think you can help me get yeah. him out? <clears throat> or get them out of yeah, yeah two... is there, like, anything around that I could use as, like, some sort of bolt thrown? The two of you together with um, your strength, like, it definitely doesn't look like one person could do it on their own. But the okay. two of you together are basically able to create kind of a, a, a shift 
on both sides at the same time that allows it to kind of roll or move, right? Um, so yeah. you're able to work together and move it together. And obviously they weren't able to do that with their own strength. Um, you push it astride. You um, help them out of the water. This is where you hear over the comms that Thane's requested at the bridge. Um, and this person appears to be secure. Um, from what you can tell, it looks like there's another person who is just kind of laying all up on a container. Um, but it very much looks like, from what you can tell, Zelri, that they're in a state that they're too far gone. Even if you were able to magically just make them appear at the, sh the ship was magically, like the whole ship with the med bay, was magically able to appear at the end of the hall that you just walked down. The walk down the hall would kill them. Mm. I would just look at Dax and shake my head. Okay. I'll pick up the one that we just unpinned. Yep, and then there's one other one who is unconscious and appears to be in a long state of uh, unconsciousness, which for you, Zelri, you're not sure on uh, Imish, like, uh, metabiology, but you would know that being in a state of uh, unconsciousness is usually, like, a part of, like, a concussion for most brained creatures. Um, so it is probably the case that they are either in a very harsh state of concussion, which could mean that they are near death themselves, or they're in a coma um, which could also be problematic, but something that's a little bit better to fix than like a very harsh um, concussion. So whether or not you want to bring them along back with you is up to you. I would like to. Okay. So you got the two. The wounded one that was conscious when you first met uh, them um, remains unconscious, but it's more of like a sleeping state is what you determine, Zelri, like a, a, a exhaustion and passing up due to that. Uh, more so than the other one's state of being. And, um, yeah. You start moving back towards the front of the ship. Oh, wait, wait. I oh. would ask if there's anything here. Like, before we leave, like, I would ask Dax if there was anything here useful to Oh, got you. Um, I'm trying to think what role would be required for that kind of action. Searching. Um, Ready. I mean, while we're here, you know, take Grab. a minute. Yeah, I like, um, I like study. Okay. And then position. Uh, risky. Control. Risky. Effect is limited. Uh, bonus bag? No. Okay. So, um, you understand that a lot of the engine has already been removed from a different part of the ship, like further back, than, even from where you're at, at the back of the livable space. They just ripped the FTL drive off the back end of it. Um, but you do see that there are a couple of um, uh, energy cores, which can be very beneficial for either trade. Um, there is a total of two of them. They would be worth one cred a piece. Oh, the yeah. problem is, is that the risky aspect of it is their energy cores. They are very explosive. So if any kind of trauma or like, uh, you know, uh, if you're shot at, it could be the case that they detonate. Um, no yeah. no Lord. Take them both. All right, so you very quickly kind of snatch them to your harness. you got, like, these two large energy cores on your back, and you start making your way uh, back to it. And, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, uh, you do have your two gam or three gambits, because you started with one extra due to Captain Jazz. Okay, so as they're all making their way to where they're going, Thane, you make it to the bat or to the bridge. I'm assuming there's a, just a very brief conversation, and you start kind of getting to work on securing the core. Um, because this is a situation where there's not much in the way of power, um, you're more or less. Um, I mean, you can use whatever action you want, whatever action type you want, 
but I think that, dependent on your choice here, I might impose a penalty because of the power is off. Does that make sense, Steve? Sorry, one more time. You are trying to secure the core, the data core, um, yes. out of a depowered system. So you can pick whatever action you want to try and remove it, uh, but depending on which action type you choose, I may impose a penalty. Um, so um, the thing I'm trying to get at it, is, am I like literally just trying to pick it, like picking a lock, or is it my like, actually hacking a console it's well there's no console to hack because it's powered off right so you're literally trying to rip a hard drive out of a computer without damaging it okay um hmm. and however however you want to say that works with your action is fine you can choose whatever action you want we can make it work but the the one that i'm thinking of is the one that i think i'm going to apply a bonus to and if you choose anyone else i'm going to apply a disadvantage does that make sense yeah i only have two options because i'm not trained in too many physical things yeah, yeah. um i'll just go with skulk since i'm trying to do it carefully and quietly since okay. we have hegemony people coming so i will apply a disadvantage to that so do you want yeah. to push yourself to get it right or do you want to get some assistance from um uh, I'll, know, uh, Lupita I'll push myself. You know what? I'm wearing spy gear. I look like Sam Fisher right now. I put the goggles <laughs> with eight visor, eight different things down. <laughs> can we do both? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lupita um, can actually turn a... Can, oh, wait. Can gambits be used? Yeah, also, yes. Yeah. Before... Okay, I'm trying to think really quick. You Is can it... do both. You can do all three. Okay, so I oh, will you can take also a... accept a devil, uh -huh. devil's bargain if you wish. Okay, I will instead of taking two stress, I can use a gambit to oh, roll. Oh, you only take one stress if you assist. You only take two stress. You only take one stress. One stress if you assist. Okay, I'll take my one stress and I will kind of help you clear your mind. And stay focused. And, and also, focused. you can oh. accept a devil's bargain. Yes. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> Sounds like you really <laughs> want me to. I do have one. I do have to tell you what the bargain is. I don't tell you uh, how it, like, yeah. So you're Okay, pulling, what's, the, what's the devil's bargain? You're pulling a data core out of a hegemonic battle cruiser, okay? You can... And this is a Devil's Bargain that I'm employing here. You can gain two, two additional bonus dice if you take this bargain. And using Lupita's assistance with, you know, uh, everything that's going on, you find a way to give a limited power structure with your Skulk ability to allow it to accept your hegemonic citizen <laughs> card to allow you access to the data core and allow you to pull it without issue based on the roll, the Devil's Bargain portion of it is, is no matter what this, uh, the resolution of that roll is, you are basically broadcasting that you are here. Oh. But you mm. get two bonus dice. Um, I'm going to take the Devil's Bargain. Alright, so you got two bonus dice for me. Oh. You got one for... Because we're a daring crew. You got one from pushing, True. you've got one from assistance, and then you've got your base skulkish Two, is two. Yeah, there's no way you can't roll a six on this. Nope. <laughs> You've never played four. You just, uh, I have played yeah. four. Okay, with, oh, no, I played uh, Kill Team with you. Yeah, you beat me. Because <laughs> you <laughs> suck at rolling dice. There you go. <laughs> well, let's see how bad it gets. All right, position is risky. Oh, yeah. Extreme. Uh, effect is standard. Extreme. Extreme. Effect is extreme. This is All big right. business. This is the reason why it would have been high tier. Bonus dice. Um, plus what do we one, say? Two, plus one from four. four bonus dice. Yeah. All right, let's see it. Got this. Oh, hey, multiple, look at those sixes. multiple that sixes. Is critical. So everything goes off without a hitch. The core is pulled out perfectly. You have never seen as perfect a transaction in your life. The thing you know is is that there is a very limited chance that when that was powered on, it was able to register who pulled the core. So there's that always going to be in the back of your mind effect, right? They're not going to know immediately, 
but they may find out. Okay. After you pull a core, after the dog <laughs> has been recovered, and after the two people that were possible to save are saved, you start making your way toward the exit. Orin, sitting on the ship, you get a signature detection of a starship in low orbit. Sick. You mm -hmm. then see that it has released a munition. It is oh. fired. Oh. You track it. It is a slow-moving munition, which means it is either detonation or transport munitions. Mm -hmm. And you watch as, mm -hmm. in the air, a massive shell explodes outwards, and what you know to be an ever sore battle frame drop and land perfectly right on the other side of the hill. Woo! Sorry, mm -hmm. what? Oh, <laughs> uh, the thing I said. The dinosaur battle frame? <laughs> oh my... Are these, like, transformers too. that are coming to get us? It's like a massive... Battle Walker mech. Oh, yeah. So. Like the whole Metal, oh. Metal Gear. <laughs> Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't give you inspiration in this game, but I will promise that you, whatever What's the next gambit? goal is, give us a gambit. Yeah, get a gambit. Get a gambit. Get a gambit for fucking. I, oh my god, I'm wearing spy gear too. <laughs> That's perfect. Metal Gear. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so oh, yeah. you, that's like one of those mech anime robots. Or in quick detection, you understand that the, the uh, massive uh, munitions uh, that the vehicle has on it um, include the very heavy um, turbo turret, which is the gun on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, it also has missile packs, which are loaded on the top of the vehicle. You can see those uh, here, these explosive metrics. Uh, fire out from it and then detonate out into smaller missiles which then home in on their target. Um, you are aware that the missiles will pose no problem for your shuttle. Your shuttle has a shield generator if I remember correctly. Is that right? Yeah. So you're good on that but that gun will pulverize the shuttle in this current state. So you were the first one to see it as you like. You're the one who sets the scene. Uh, is it is it targeting my off shuttle? Targeting has like... targeting has not happened yet. And again, if your shuttle is completely off, you wouldn't be able to detect whether or not it's locked onto you or not. Yeah, I think I can fire this thing up and get out of that main gun's range before it can lock onto me if I do this thing quick enough. Okay. That's, I think, what Oren would do is try and get up and away from this thing and let him know he's going to have to loop around. That's okay. exactly what the captain would say if he was told. Okay, so you power the ship up. The second that it turns on, you can actually see kind of uh, broadcast messaging. Uh, and it appears that somebody was trying to send you a message through the ship. You were able to hear the communications of the communicators because that was left on, right? But mm -hmm. you weren't able to get long-range uh, communications from the main ship. And so, um, I can't remember the female robot's name. My brain's... Ula. Ula, right. Um, she was sending you messages broadcasting that a Starsmith ship um, was sighted in your region uh, in Lower mm -hmm. Third Lord. Uh, but because you were powered okay. down, you did not get that mm -hmm. message. Um, you power up the ship enough to realize, too, that it is now locking onto you, um, and it's mm -hmm. slowly turning, because it's not, this thing is not about speed, it is about sheer and utter massive destruction, uh, turning that gun so it's pointed straight at the front of that ship. Um, go ahead, and I'm assuming you're going to take an action in response to this new uh, oh, bit, of, yeah. <laughs> bit of functionality. And I'm, from what it sounded like, you're moving away. You're running away. Oh, yeah. We're fucking off. We're fucking off hard. Okay. <laughs> you want a hell are roll? Are we still on the ship or are we on the shuttle? We're on the, on the ship. ship. No, you're on the exiting. ship. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you want an exit, okay. I need to keep the ship flying. The action... So I'm going to try and get out of range of that uh, main gun. The action is I can handle the long range missiles, yeah. Choice. Um, however you would like to go about it. Yeah, I'm gonna helm. Okay, go ahead and roll it. And um, uh, again, I've given you a free gambit, so you currently have four. Um, <laughs> there's no one here that can uh, help you, but you can push. Um, 
as you like. Pump in what you need to pump in and then roll your dice. This risky or desperate? We're still in a risky situation. It has, and it has effect, not shifted yet. Effect is for this, it's going to be standard. You're just trying to. So avoid. I'm going to take three stress okay. and get plus one effect and plus one die. Okay. No bargains on option. No yeah. assist on option. And you can spend a gambit if you'd like. So that would be effect great. Right? Uh huh. Yeah, you push the effect from standard to great, correct? And plus, w can I can I take one of our gambits yes. to keep the shuttle alive? Is <laughs> everyone okay yeah, with that? Yeah, do it. So yeah, that gives me going. two bonus die on this. Mm -hmm. One for pushing myself, one for the gambit. Yep. I got a six. Hey. So you power it on, and like, again, robots aren't want for like emotional effects, but you're an Urbot, a very special one. So there is definitely like a maneuvering where you're kind of walking in, but like the mind mm. of the Urbot is very much panicked. Like it's the numbers are crunching very fast, and you're kind of pushing it all, getting it to point. And the second you get that thing powered up enough to actually move into sublight speed, you're up and you're off, and the landing gears are quick in so you have perfect maneuverability the gun everybody inside of the ship hears it it's a winding but it's not a winding that starts and then fires it fires immediately upon the wind beginning so it's like eep, just yeah, sh fucking... smashing shooting and anybody who was outside which is nobody so just you and also the yep. cool audience at home the ship bolts up and starts spiraling in air as this chain of red hot ammunition is chasing after it the tracer rounds kind of flying off into the sky behind it chasing like inches away at some points scratching the back of the ship in other points but you manage to kind of tilt it down and kind of push it behind the rock that it's on and cause it to turn full circle to be kind of like pointed away from the massive ship at that point uh based on positioning and uh who went with who i would say that jazz and the front or jazz went by himself or uh, sorry thane went by himself oh. right <clears throat> Did you go with Thane when he went to the helm, or did you go... No, I, no, I would go with him. Okay, so that, I would say that your crew would basically be back because you're not hauling a bunch of bodies. Uh, and so, Jazz, just because you're the captain, you pop out first, and you're kind of catching the last couple seconds of that. And then you watch as, from the bottom of it, the, effectively the grundle of the mech <laughs> pops open like a door bay, ropes drop out, and you see armored hegemonic soldiers drop out onto the island opposite you. Not it. No. And then slowly, after the firing, you're kind of standing there, you can run back inside if you want to, the mech starts to slowly turn itself back to facing the Magistrate of Iron. Duck in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lupita, <laughs> Lupita um, and uh, um, uh, everybody besides Dax and Zelri are right there, right? And as you're kind of like gathering like near the open porthole, which would be effectively, I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the scene. Sorry, bear with me here. Effectively, you're here. If you want to put your tokens down in that space, that's fine, but I'm just making sure you note that that's the case. What you can see outside besides that, just as a note, is there's the speeder bike there. The speeder bike looks like it could hold two people. And we got these other jokers that we gotta worry about too. Yep, you got I mean, Mo no, gotta. and the other guy who's wounded, but he's not like mm -hmm. inhibited. And then you have the two uh, unconscious individuals. Do, do like, are we all like there now, together? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'd say at about that time, Zalri and Dax kind of rush up on the other side of the door. So you're both on the same, like at the same door. You're just on different frames of it. You're kind of both kind Ooh, of peeking out that way. Are those Why fucking are so spacers. Well, I don't know. Why are you Why so big? God? 
Everyone's like a different size. Well, why'd you pull yourself? Yeah. Why'd you pull yourself onto the map? You could have just pulled yourself from the ship. Oh, I didn't do that at all. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Okay. And then GM uh, to the back. <laughs> Because my ship token doesn't work. That is Mo. And that is the other person. Who I think said I said was a he, but I meant to say is a she. Sorry. She's kind of tomboy. Huh? I can't control the token that's on the ship. How fucking dare you? Well, they can't dare because they can't even control it. Is that what I said? How about now? Yeah. Okay, so you're all kind of crowded around the door. And as I mentioned, it looks like hegemonic soldiery are dropping down. So, out of character note, um, when I say hegemonic soldiery, the best thing that you can kind of imagine in your head is, like, Stormtroopers colorway, but, like, ODSTs uh, from the Halo series, kind of look-wise. not uh, great. Well, he's dressed as a something, can't he? <laughs> If, 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 if you gotta, you, you gotta walk. He's just a hegemonic officer. Why don't you try some? Uh, why don't you try something? And she says in reply, uh, "I'm not playing that game again." <laughs> no. Last no. time I did that, I got uh, shot. Yeah, <laughs> no, you thanks. got shot for that. Yeah, the the time for negotiation is long gone. <laughs> okay, so um. The other thing you notice, um, this would be uh, Tarosh that you notice, is that there's a red beam kind of like tracking inside of the space, which you would know is a sniper's uh, pinpoint laser, and it's coming from the ridge behind the mech. So it's probably the person who was left here and signaled the flare out, and who's basically mm -hmm. been watching the ship while the prey was still inside. The bait, if you will. He's going to point out sniper. You said you're going to try and get, you... Oh, you're pointing it out? No, he's, yeah, he's pointing it out. I thought you said you were gunning for him. Well, if you want to take a oh, no. you can, you can try and like, scoop yeah. a sniper with your assault rifle no. if you want. Oh, no. Oh, I'm, no. I'm, I was I'm, just pointing it out. I'm totally chill with that. Like, if you want to give it a go. <laughs> Use all the gamut. Use all of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but we still have an army in the back. <laughs> Yes, so, and uh, as the army starts to kind of land, or kind of take the ground and starts moving, the other thing you'll notice, Terosh, is they are armed uh, with simple, like, uh, battle rifles, very simple, kind of like close quarters, high rate of fire weaponry, um, and they have mm -hmm. jump packs. Mm -hmm. Love that. That oh. keeps getting worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just keeps getting mm -hmm. worse. There's about six like, of them. Can we lure them onto the ship and use, like, just kill box them? Well, a quick note, too. This is but not the only way off... off the ship. This is not the only way off of the ship. There are different holes on the okay. ship. Then if... let's get the fuck off the ship before they just blow it up. If but you... getting off the ship yeah. means getting in the water, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just radiated, right? No. Oh. This is drinking water. Okay, like, oh, lovely. Who, who, who can't swim? What is swim? Uh, okay, one. Uh, yeah, Tarosh, I don't think <laughs> would mean, be very Tarosh good. No, uh, no, he he, he barely comes the water, so yeah, he he would be able to swim. All right, how about you two? And she points at like Mo. See, this character better be able to swim. I don't think the unconscious ones can swim. Well, don't worry about them. I got well, it. Well, they're, they're also spacers. Who cares? Just to press it, you can see right outside there's the speeder. They're right. spacers? Who cares? <laughs> there's no hegemonic excuse there. Is that racist? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I thought they were, I thought they were 
typically had no never mind oops it's, it's a bit bigoted They're but it's not racist right it, no, i definitely like spacer, i definitely meant it uh, in the uh, means people that like come from space, space. yeah oh yeah. i thought i was thinking i was hegemonics. thinking something different or hegemonics that was not i meant uh, ah. a nickname that captain, would probably be used look, commonly uh, we're used good we're used to saying crazy things captain it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Hedges is probably a simple common parlance in scoundrel like lingo for Hedges. uh the soldiery. Hedges. Well, I meant to be, I meant guild. I meant guild is what I meant. Got you. But these are definitely hegemonic soldiers. So they the Starsmith yes. guild doesn't fight, <laughs> but they have under their employ like individuals who use their vehicles and vesselry to fight. Um, but Which is to, why he would say, well, fuck them. I want to make sure I mention it sure, one sure, last sure. time. The speeder bike right outside is present. Right. A speeder bike, like which can ride on water? Yeah. The speeder bikes are like the skips. And how many people Zoe can ride on it? Two total people can fit on it. And that's Zoe conscious or unconscious. Say that we put the um, the data shard goes with it. Yeah. Yes, the data shard goes with it. Give it to the injured uh, person mm -hmm. posing as a hegemony hegemony yeah. soldier. Yeah. That's how we say it? <laughs> Hegemonic soldier. God damn it. <laughs> okay, so if you're kind of quick parlancing, you're saying that guy that we don't know and who else? Yes, be one of us. Wait, yeah, it was like you want to give the critical item we got to the person we don't know. Random person. Wait, wait, wait. Having Let me. Can we? Oh, no, no, it's the her person name. who's no, with Mo. Give They're it, with Mo. Give it to Mo. Yeah. Well, we don't know. We Can don't we... know Mo. I don't know Mo. I'm well, Mo is the person no. we're here to to yeah, well, yeah, grab. Well, we, we're no, here no. to rescue him, no, but we don't know him. Our, know him. our thoughts oh, no. on the rebellion might have changed by the fact that they murdered innocents. So again, yeah. we, we have a lot of mixed. Yeah. Feelings here, mm. let alone yeah. the fact that I'm about to start shooting at you. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. I have a question about the scene. Yes. Um, we is can this pause here. is this thing uh, standing on something that's like really sturdy? No. Okay. What do we got? I have um, kinetics. So I, I can... also have power cords. Power cords? Power cores. Cord. The, oh, the power energy cords. cords. Okay. Like highly explosive. Can we shoot one or, or throw them? Well, thing? here's the thing. I can hurl a table-sized object with dangerous cores. force. Uh, the, the, the I could hurl a power size. core at him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can we do that at the base of it so it like falls? You the see the them on Dax's okay. back, and you say, Dax, turn. And then she kind of yeah. about, you kind of use the way to kind of grapple it off of the mount that it's attached to, kind of move it not out the doorway yet, and as it starts to kind of, like, barrel that gun straight at you, you fling it. And are you, are you targeting it, or are you targeting the ground that it's standing on? I want to target its feet. Okay. So then go ahead and make this would be an action, so go ahead and make an attune roll. Um, okay, I'm gonna roll a tune. Um, I'm gonna uh, push, but I'm gonna spend a gambit to push. Got Is it. That, are people okay with that? Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, so yep. that'll bring us down to two. Now you can spend a because you use an ability to push by spending a gambit. That doesn't count as spending a gambit. So you can still spend a gambit on top of that if you wish. And we're currently at three gambits. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're at three. Yeah, go for it. So spend an additional gambit. And um, I would like to proffer a devil's bargain as well. You know, I love mm. anything having to do with I'll the explain devil, the so. bargain. You're currently <laughs> using the way um, in front of a vessel and vehicle that has camera utilization. The bargain will basically mean that your face will be featured in this action and they will be able to identify you at that point. So if you wish to take the bargain, for me. 1d6 extra, but I you mean, they basically know here. <laughs> you, have, you, have to get, you have to get caught in 4k, right? Wait, or, John, what did is, you say? Uh, I said, Not... 
My, uh, John, oh, Captain John. John. What's an infamy? <laughs> That's infamy. a what? Infamy. Infamy. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah it's the daring thing to do. I don't care. Yeah. Okay, so plus yeah. one dice for the Devil's Bargain. Okay. The uh, current position is still risky. We haven't shifted bad um, yet. And then uh, effect on this, because it is very cool, I am going to start <laughs> it at great. Okay, so I'm risky. It's risky, right? Risky at position and effect great. Effect great. Um, I'm getting one dice from, from Bush, one dice Bush. from uh, Devil's Gambit. Bargain, and you can use a Gambit as well if you'd like. Yes, so that's so a total we, of three. We've spent two Gambits in that action, so we're down to one Gambit remaining, and plus three dice, yes. Okay, um, can I count on assistance for one? No, it's kind of like a Nobody sudden else here thing, does. right? Nobody else here does uh, the way, way magic. Right. There's no... Can we cover fire? I give you a very Ooh. commanding nod. Oh, 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 cover fire? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because there's a sniper. There's a sniper. I'll, I, take, I'll know. take that for assist. I like that. That's very good, Johnny. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Does Johnny need to roll? Uh, Johnny doesn't. He's just taking a stress. To oh, give oh you plus taking a stress. Yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay, so go, go. He, sees, he sees what's happening. He goes, hold on. Wait. And then <laughs> firing up. And yeah. you can see the light kind of move to the side <laughs> as the sniper yeah. kind of pulls under cover. The chain gun is like literally pointed at you, Tara. So as you're shooting up, you're not looking at what you're shooting at anymore. You're kind of focusing yeah. on that. Then you hear the Jesus. You hear the whoosh. And there's like a moment where you're like, was that the, the way being used or is that the gun? <laughs> and then you see that bright energy core fly out, hit right underneath the feet of it, explode. And that whole mech flies forward straight at you. Unfortunately, I do not have a prone version of this mech. Um... <laughs> And just applying the prone, uh, like, tick does not really give it the justice that I feel is needed here. But it falls face first, gun smashing yes. into the side of the thing and spiraling and shooting outwards for no reason. Uh, but it slams into the water. It does not look like it is destroyed, but it definitely looks like it's going to take a beat, like a very long beat for it to get up. And you're pretty sure three of the six guys that were underneath it are dead now. Okay. Wait. Okay, we should go. Let's. Any way we can call the shuttle. Yeah, you have communicators. Yeah, we have a call. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, you need to circle back now. Where do you start moving on the ship to try and get received? And are you sending um, anybody else on the speeder the at this point. point to get them out? Um. I mean, I I feel like we should send the injured person that one of the one of the injured the injured person that we meant to come here with who was with mo mm -hmm. who's with the cause so that may i feel like i feel that makes sense if you want to keep the data core with you and risk it before the shuttle gets back you can or you can send uh mo and his friend on their ship and they can just go away or you can send like thane and another person with the data core on the skip and go that route that's more what i was thinking so thane, thane doesn't have a gun though doesn't have a gun though do you want to send hey. Tarosh? Tarosh, he's your best fighter. Yeah, give, send Tarosh with that. <laughs> that makes okay. sense. They wouldn't fuck with that. Yeah, you, you, mm -hmm. yeah. go. Is the lady. Well, I'd, I'd tell Thane to give it to Tarosh and then have him go with the injured one on the... On the... Tarosh, okay. don't give it to anyone. Because nope. this will be the last effect for it, I just want one more action <laughs> roll, and this will basically streamline to the the cut and then to the next episode situation. Johnny, I need you um, to go ahead and make an action roll. This is for you escaping. You can choose any action you want. I'm not saying there's going to be a limiter on any of them. Any of them I think could be fine. But like the ones that kind of come to my mind are like you're scrambling. Scramble, yeah. I, I say scramble. Yeah, it's... okay. If that's what you wanted to go with, go ahead and make a scramble roll. And then again, we're at risky position. Effect yeah, is standard. That's a roll vote. Uh, Wolf Origin, right? Could I have that? No. Could I assist with a command? No? Is that is it? Your, your, command action? Because your... I told him to do it. Well, oh, you're not scramble. using an action to assist, you just say that you're assisting. And since you're trying to keep him from being kind of the target, you're yeah. helping in that by doing similar to what Tarosh did, right? Okay. Um, I like that. And then, um, so you've got assistance. Are you wanting to push yourself here, Johnny? Yeah. Okay, so you're too stressed. So Use a gambit if you need okay. to. And then you're one okay. stress, John, because you just put, or you assisted, okay? One gambit. And yep, then you're using fine. the very last gambit on this as well to get out. Okay? Ooh. 
Okay. Uh, how do I roll for it again? Do I just click on the yeah, thing, right? Oh I'm gosh. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, 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 that's why I'm forcing you to roll, because I think this is the first time, right? Or one of yeah. the only times. It's yeah, scramble, it and then you have yeah. plus three bonus dice. Is that math right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's yep. risky, right? Uh, risky position. Effect standard. Okay. Standard. And you can push yourself for one more stress to raise the effect to great, which means it'll be above what I'm expect or what I'm laying out is what's going to be the effect if you succeed. So it'll be like three stress altogether. Three stress. I'm pushing correct. myself. To... Okay. Do well, that. that. Okay, so it'll then affect great. Yeah. To be great. Oh, I think I may. Have... Okay, the bonus dice, it's. Uh... Three. Three. Okay. One gambit, one I think assist. I did that right. Yes, nailed it perfectly. So, oh. six is a success. Yes. You hop onto the back. Uh, Jazz, you're kind of like, go, get the data core back to the, sh uh, back to the base. And then you pop out with your two blasters, ah, shooting at the uh, air. You hit one of the soldiers like directly in the chest. Doesn't kill him. Knocks him down to the ground. You're also shooting that blaster up where Terok shot before, not knowing where the sniper is, but kind of hitting up there. The red beam yep. kind of traces down that way, and like a nice rail shot comes through and hits near you. You kind of dive to the side and cover. Um, but that was plenty of time for Terosh to get onto the back of the vehicle with the guy kind of in the front. The guy's not driving. Terosh kind of grabs a hold of the uh, steering device, pushes that bad boy while the wounded guy is kind of cradling the data core. And the two of them just zip off to the north, and you can see them kind of stream out and around the front of the ship. As the shuttle comes down to the other side, and you guys start making your way through the back end of the ship, we will discuss what happens in the very mm -hmm. aftermath of that next episode. Thanks for watching those that did, and we will see you then.